What's up, everybody? Shout out to our sponsor. <clears throat> From the makers of Helix, the most comfortable mattress ever comes all form. Easily customizable sofas, armchairs, love seats, and more. All form delivers directly to your home with fast free shipping. You can assemble all the furniture yourself in minutes. No tools needed. Right now, All Form is offering 20% off all orders from our listeners for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. That is 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. And also thank you to Viore for sponsoring Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most versatile, uh, most, most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioriclothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% twenty percent off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. Nate Land is also brought to you by Electric. They make e-bikes accessible for everyone. Incredibly durable and convenient design. Get wherever you need to go over any terrain, including snow and sand. Go to electricebikes.com. Use code Nate to get a free foldable mountain bike lock with any bike purchase. That's a free bike lock when you use code Nate at L E C T R I C E B I K E S dot com. Life is busy and your well being is important. Athletic Greens makes it so easy to get the vitamins you need every day. Athletic Greens is giving you, Nate Lane listeners, a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athletic.greens.com slash Nate for a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Finally, what would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? Would you move to a new city, start a new family? Through Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly with a personal loan so you can tackle your next big financial goal. Find out how at upstart.com slash Nate. Lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargetzi, Aaron Weber. And filling in, filling in for Baby Bates, Justin Smith. Uh, welcome, What's up, dude? I'm ex- I'm excited. This is it. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, Bates, is, Bates is gonna come back and be like, "Hey, what's wrong with my yeah?" Dude? What's, what's what's this week? He just sits lower. <laughs> I guess he won't go up. Uh, he's, he's sitting there below the table. Hey, is this? Yeah. Is this? Does this look weird, guys? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you broken a chair before? Oh, Justin? all the constantly, constant. Like it's a big problem. I I I dated a girl where I literally broke a piece of furniture. She had a three. <laughs> I broke a piece of furniture in her upstairs. On the main floor and then in, in her basement. Wow. I broke a piece of furniture at every level. Same day? And uh no, no, no. It was like and it was shocking how many of them were steel. Okay. I mean it wasn't wow. just, it wasn't like a wood put together. Wasn't a Ikea. plastic foldable chair. No. no it were... was like patio furniture it was like, all right, this one feels safe. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I was I was just sitting there, I watched one whole season of the wire. <laughs> And then I got up, and the chair just never sat right ever again. It was just, it was just leaning forward. There's just, there's just books under it. Oh yeah, it's just, it. it's it's just so bad. Yeah. Well, these chairs are holding up great. They're doing so good. Yeah. What? Uh, have you broke a chair? I broke one chair. I have a bit about it. I broke a chair. Uh, was in college. Showed up late to a uh, an exam. Yeah. In like an auditorium. I was late, and everybody was taking the test. And uh-huh. there's an empty seat in the front. And I grabbed my test and I sat down. And it took out the whole; they're all connected, so it was like dominoes. Like ba ba ba, everybody fell down. Yeah. And the worst part is the tension was so high because people were taking an exam. Nobody laughed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just like super embarrassing. Too. Yeah. And I had to go find another seat in the back. Uh, yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, I have the fear <laughs> of doing it all the time. Yeah. I was one time. I, a buddy of mine was taping a special. Yeah. And with a special taping, you know how our audience coordinator is for like showtime. Yeah. So they had like a whole coordinator thing. I had to. Tur- I had a hat on with a logo on it, so I had to turn it around backwards. And they just have plastic chairs because it was in some place in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I was I was sitting there the whole time. And I was with Emma Wilman, who's another funny yeah, comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was sitting next to her and. uh we're sitting there watching, and all of a sudden I'm laughing, and he says a punchline that it's just so it's so, it was so funny. And I lean back, and I could feel the legs kind of do this, like yeah. just this number. And I was like, oh, oh no, because now I'm thinking if this thing snaps, they're gonna have to stop everything. Because right. like, also you've been in enough specials where you're like, this is it, this is the one uh-huh. that he's getting, and uh, they would have to stop the whole thing. They'd have to move me out. 
get a whole nother chair for continuity. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, it's a whole thing. So literally, I'm just sitting there the whole time, just like, please, please. For 30 minutes, I was I was praying so hard. Yeah. Just please do not let this break because that would be the nightmare scenario. <laughs> it didn't break. It held Oh, on. no, no. It held. But it's like, even when I got up, when I got up, I looked. And you ever seen like a plastic, like the stress marks? Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. front, like, like it's starting yeah. to tear. The chair yeah. had stretch marks at the end of it. You're yeah. just like, oh, the guy man. came behind you with a crowbar. And he just knew. <laughs> so you're you're like uh, Jason Bourne in the fact that you walk into rooms, you know the chairs situation before anybody even realized what <laughs> yeah. room they're in. Like you have to look at chair, like any room you walk in, you're like, no, yeah, maybe. All right. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody's like, hey, welcome. You, and that's going on in your brain. 100%. Yeah. Before, you, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm aware just, of it. You scope out the situation yeah. everywhere you go. Where are we going? That's yeah. where you go. I'm going to stand. No, I'll stand. I'm fine. Like, you know, I've been I, sitting all day and you haven't. Yeah. That's what and you go, I've been sitting all day, dude. You're like, yeah. oh, you're a comedian, though. He's like, yeah, yeah. but, you know, I sat. A lot. I mean, not only do you have to look at the, like the the sitting situation. Yeah, I got to look at the bathroom situation too. Because uh. sometimes you go to a place, and you're like, oh, if I, if there's a problem, I can't I can't go here. Yeah, because you can't. I mean, we, we stayed at the same condo. There was a comedy condo at a place that will remain nameless because Aaron headlines there now. Yeah, but you can't even sit it like the, it's next to the shower you can't even get into uh, it no. justin and i weren't there at the same time no 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 we yeah. weren't thank god we didn't destroy that, that place yeah. <laughs> that place would have been just a pile of rubble it just comes. you guys have a tornado around here yeah. no no just just weber and justin you guys just start using the shower and then go and then uh there you go boy you guys just gotta buy that house when you leave you go yeah we're just both going on it That'd be easier than explaining what happened in there. We'll just we'll just sign your checks back over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's stuff people don't think about. I know. Situation that you got to, you know, everybody has their things that, it, whether you're big or small, whatever, you could be have some weird thing. You have this, you have that. But you do. You have your, you're like, what's going on? Like, let me see. Mm-hmm. I would, yeah, I'm trying to think if I, like, go, I have a problem going, like, if I have to pee, like, next, if they could hear it, if they're outside. Like, the bathroom that's in here, I could never do it. Could never in a million years. Well, how did you do the? Did you ever go to like the stadiums where they have like the troughs? Oh, I wouldn't pee. I mean, really? I'd wait for the. Yeah, I'd wait for a stall. I couldn't, so I just would go wait for a stall. That's insane. I think it is insane. Yeah, I think people are lunatics. They can't. Yeah. Like I don't trust them. <laughs> like they go. I mean, I, I I always look at their freedom of being like. Can you imagine just being a dude that you're just? They, I mean, they pee like I see the golfers. I mean, I, when I have to pee on a golf course, I mean, I got to walk. I'm, <laughs> I'm borderline not even on the course. I got to make sure no one can see. And like, yeah. you just see people on the back of a tee box, just kind of, they just turn around out of politeness to you. They don't even need to turn around, but they're just like, <laughs> I'll at least do that out of politeness. And then they, and you're like, well, I don't even know. I don't know your life, man. Yeah. We live different lives. For sure. You got to go to a place where the snakes live. Yeah. Off the course? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the snakes and alligators. I mean, I'm stuff. back. Like, it's, uh-huh. I will, you know, I, there's a couple turns. I, I get into the weeds and the trees, and then I still do a couple turns. You know, I try to throw you off, and then I go behind <laughs> some tree. But, I mean, I've, I've done it where there was one time at Legends and uh, Vanderbilt Legends, people, it's the course here. Uh, but there, uh, I, was, I was peeing, and there's, like, you don't realize like there's a greenway, like a walkway on the other side. So I'm peeing like everybody in the back, kind of in the trees. And so I'm peeing and I look up and it's just a family just walks. <laughs> and I don't know that there's a walkway. So yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah. well, there's just an entire, there's a road over there. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, and it's the most people on earth yeah. that are like, Hey, let's go this way right now. And then you're like, well, this is happening. Do you ever do on road trips? Just pull over on the side of the interstate. The kids had to use the bathroom. Uh, so my dad got fed up. He's like, "We're not waiting for another rest yeah. stop. We're just gonna pull over right here." Mm. You know. I mean, I've done it in traffic, like when you like at a standstill. <laughs> yeah. You're, I mean, you're using gridlock, and you're just like, "Listen, I, I was like, I you skipped, get out of the car. I skipped. Well, I mean, you're, you're, you can't go anywhere. You're in the middle of traffic. It's deadlocked. And if like, because like if you drive, like if you do like road gigs, how much are you in deadlock? Uh, deadlock. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. A lot. No, no, no. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's like. When it happens, it always happens at like the worst situation. You're like, oh, like there's like a, a nicer truck stop. Like yeah. I like I'm from Oklahoma, so like I always stop at Love's because yeah. I like I like to keep the good. money. I like to keep the money in Oklahoma. Yeah. 
yeah. what I like to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even when I go somewhere, it's like, okay, I'm sending it home. Yeah. Is what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah, y'all don't have enough oil money out there. I'm telling already. you, we gotta you gotta keep it. You gotta keep it tight. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's I like our, it. our, we gotta keep it with our people. I like it. And so I'm like, oh, there's always like a loves twenty miles away, and then I just hit like there's like a, a horrible accident ten miles up. So all the lanes are stopped because you have like. You know the highway patrolmen's aren't, aren't aren't there yet, so you got guys that are just good old boys that are trying to direct traffic for yeah. semis, and so they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. So it's just you're just sitting there for twenty minutes to two hours, yeah, deadlocked, and you're like, "Well, I mean, I had to stop, I had to pee." So yeah. you're just you just got to open both doors and just be like, just make sure there's no kids around. Just, hey, listen. We got to do what we got to do. Oh, you just stand right there you by the. Oh yeah, just stand in the middle of the road. I was pictured yeah. Justin in front of me in traffic. You just see him get out, run out of the car, <laughs> hop over that yeah. median thing. That'd be yeah. more appropriate than what he's doing. I just it's, think I think the two. But the one thing it was really funny. There was a there was there was a. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine me hopping over you something. Don't, you don't even stand up out of the car. <laughs> you, just just lean, just lean you go on your side. <laughs> And just you hope know, people think you're just spraying a Mountain Dew bottle I out just, there. I just, I get a, I get a cup, I get a cup pouring it out like that's yeah. what's just yeah. <laughs> Never mind, it's two different streams. Don't worry about it. Don't yeah. ask questions. Well, wow. there, like, so what do you stand and try to act like you're just like you're like, what's up with this traffic, dude? And then just hope you try to keep all the eyes up top. You start doing sleight of hand up top. What is whose card is this? And everybody's looking up, and then you're like, "All right, I gotta go." Well, sometimes I open my trunk. Like I'm like I open my my door. And I'm, I act like I'm looking for something, and then I open the back one. Yeah. So that 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 creates my cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then I go open the trunk. Like, man, where is that? Like, like the the like yeah. the what's going to solve this traffic jam yeah. is in there. Oh, there's road yeah. flares back there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then I look for it, and then all of a sudden, just make sure nobody's kind of paying attention, and then just. Yeah. I think they're all watching. I mean, I know, I know they are. Yeah, but you like, I like to, I like to give people the illusion. Yeah, uh-huh. it's like, oh, he's just like he's. I like to give whenever parents are with their kids, maybe I like to give them plausible deniability. Okay, of like, oh no, no, he's just looking for something. Yeah. I know it looks like right. what he's doing yeah. this, right? But you know, that's just that's not. And there's probably a lot of parents with kids on that interstate. I'm <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, where some of. He's like, you know, if there's families around. Oh, on the interstate? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. probably a few of them. <laughs> it's not, it should be age appropriate. Yeah. You're being in the middle of the interstate. You're like, I just try to keep it a little above bar, you know? There's, I'd like to picture you just your hand just on, you're like, this way, like, your hand is just on the top of the hood and the door. And you're just like, God, golly, man, it's crazy. I know, right? And then they yeah. just see you, they see you shake. They just you're up there like, I don't know what's going. You got like you're gonna shiver. And they're like, What is that? You're like, he's like, All right, everybody. And he goes around, closes all his doors and never gets out ever again. You Guess gotta- he never found what he was looking for. And so he decided never I have to explain the shirt tuck in too, where yeah. you just go. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What if, uh, if traffic moves would be the best? <laughs> while you're while oh. you're being, <laughs> we did. Ever talked about Lewis? What we did to Lewis? No. Uh, on uh, we were did we were like it was me, Lewis J Gomez, uh, I think Big J, and might have been one other person, maybe Vecchio or something. I don't know. And so we're driving, we're driving back from a gig. We all open for like Big J, and then so we're driving back from the gig. And we're in that kind of traffic. And it's like going from Connecticut back to New York on a Sunday is like the most traffic on 95. And so we're driving back and we're just in, we're barely moving, whatever. So this is back. I don't, I don't think Lewis smokes anymore, but he smoked cigarettes. And then, uh, so he wanted to, and he was like, well, you can't smoke in the car. So he's like, well, I'll just get out and walk next to you. We're not moving. I was like, I don't you know, we're moving a little fast. And so he gets out of the car. And I mean, within... 45 seconds we can't see him <laughs> lewis is he i mean he's, he's you don't know where he's at yeah so now lewis has got to catch us <laughs> and he's walking he gets on the other side of the interstate in the middle <laughs> at one point and then he comes back on the other side and so i mean we're so far the yeah. traffic was moving and then so then we get out we put all his bags out and one cigarette and a match on his bags and then right when he gets close we drive away again. So now he's got to get all his stuff. And he's just I mean it's we're putting there's a show going on. Yeah. And yeah. so eventually he gets back in. But the crazy part was like was this was like a Sunday Monday we're at like the cellar and this person goes up and they just see Lewis and they go 
hey, were you walking around on the <laughs> interstate? Like, they were like, what are the odds of that? That guy was like, he was just in our group that watched Lewis do this. Oh, my that God. That was pretty fun. Yeah. It's a yeah. credit. That's it's the worst. That's a, that's the worst part about being recognized. You you think like, oh, maybe they've seen me on TV. Mm. They've seen they know me from like a, a <clears> thing, <throat> a show, something very popular. Yeah. Did I see you walking on the highway? Yeah. <laughs> smoking a cigarette, uh, <laughs> carrying see, bags. Did I see you at Rock Bottom earlier yeah. today? Yeah, that was me. You had to look at him so much to recognize him. Uh, you know, you're not gonna recognize. It's kind of random. You know, I guess you know Lewis. You would recognize Lewis. All right. Uh, comments, everybody. Uh, yeah, Bates will be back. Bates will be back next week. Mm. Next week will be a big fun week. Uh, we are uh, I, my the Grammys are next week, and Bates has a uh, a baby, so we're going to hear all about that. Probably open with my Grammy stuff first, and <laughs> you don't want to bury the lead. <laughs> you don't want to bury the lead. Like yeah. who? It could be. You're like, what's more impressive? You're like, I don't. You know, yeah. a 50 year old having a baby or uh, getting a Grammy. I don't know. The odds are probably close to the same, <laughs> and they're uh, so we're. But no, we want we uh, we can't wait to hear about it. And uh, he's been uh, sending love to all them, as we know y'all have too. Uh, so start with you guys' comments. Uh, Lawrence Be- Bammer Beamer, this might be y'all's best pod yet. My cheeks are legit hurting. I was laughing and smiling so much. Only thing he was missing was baby daddy. Mm. Prayers to his family. So happy for him. Baby Daddy's another good name. I know. Baby Daddy. That one's going to stick. I like it. Uh, Kurt Hunt. <laughs> well, folks, it's official. One year ago today, I quit drinking soda, pop, Coke, or however you say it in your region of the country because Nate challenged himself and the folks on the Nate Land podcast to get healthy. Nate only lasted until the next episode, <laughs> but I made it a year. Good for you, Kurt. That's awesome, Kurt. You showed me up. Well, Kurt, I'm now... I'm trying to catch you. I'm not going to give up soda. Uh, so that's over. But I'm down. You know, our weight loss thing, I'm down. I'm 181. Wow. Yeah, I was 194. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I'm a tiny, getting tiny. But that's awesome, Kurt. See, someone just goes, I'll, I'll keep going. That's why I gave up because I knew Kurt would carry <laughs> carry the torch for us. Kelly, Kelly Swallows. If we don't get a split screen of the rock bare chest with his baby and baby baits on bare chest breakfast, I will not feel my time dedicated to this podcast was even worth it. Look at that. There it is. There it is. That's so, look, I mean, good <laughs> night. The difference. Which one is which again? Yeah. Yeah. Bates needs to get, uh, I think it's the first time I've ever seen Bates with his shirt off. And I don't care for it. He needs to get that tattoo the rock has. Or maybe just pull that blanket up a little higher. Uh, yeah. If you're taking a picture, I don't know. <laughs> you're like, just maybe, yeah. you know, no one's in there. No one's in the room. And they go, maybe just pull, just, you know. Just a half an inch. Just a little pull bit. Pull it up. Yeah. I love how there's not a blanket in the left one. Yeah, not I mean. Not a blanket at all. I mean, the rock shows less nipple than Bates does, and we'd <laughs> rather see the rocks. So... <laughs> Look at his baby. Very cute. Though. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, not much better. I mean, that is the best thing ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that y'all would know. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, me and baby. I mean, I got, maybe one day, dude. I got the one big day. chest thing going. That is so, true. like, one, one out of two. Your baby would feel great. When me I'm and Justin you, have yeah. kids, we're going to do that exact same picture. Yeah. Two of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, normal people, it's just like a Walmart pillow. I'm like a Serta yeah. over here. Like, yeah, your baby's going to be, you like a, to, yeah, yeah. you're going to sleep there. That's perfect. Your Helix mattress. It's like a waterbed. Uh, <laughs> Jackson Clark. I was going to say I'm a big fan of the podcast because I've been listening since episode five or six, but I've just now realized this is a video podcast at episode 91. Also, YouTube suggested it, or I would have written it out to 100 eps. I can't describe a dedicated folk. Any more perfect. Yep, that's what we would do. No yeah. idea. What's that? <laughs> it's videoed. Oh. 91 episodes in. Yeah. It is on YouTube if you ever want to watch it. Uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, Christopher M. Just saw Justin Smith in Springfield, Missouri. His smart watch jokes were unbelievable. Oh, well, look at that. Look at that. Did you guys make that up and just put it on there? Because I... 
Yeah, well, you were here. We wrote it today. <laughs> That's why we didn't give the last name. We just said, they're like, uh, Matthew, Mar. You go, just put Luke. him, dude. That sounds real. Christopher sounds real. Yeah. It's also the owner of the club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is true. That's, he just, that's he the just, owner of the club's he name. He just wanted Is his just, name Christopher M? No. It's, oh, that'd be very funny. But it's Christopher. So you're like, oh, yeah. Maybe he put the M in there. It's like, that'll yeah, fall. It's off. Christopher that's, Michael Ray. That could be. Him. Oh, my gosh. It really could be uh, him. How'd the special go, man? You taped it. Oh, my there? gosh. Yeah, I haven't seen you since, you've, since yeah. you taped it. It was so I mean, it was so good. I mean, it was like all of them, all of them were, but that we got it on the first shot, which was Ooh. unbelievable. Like, that's the yeah. best feeling in the world because now you just get to play around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, I mean, it was magic. That room, that, when, that room. When's it going to come out? Uh, we're thinking June. Okay. And Homeless Pimp is doing it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's Mike Lavin. It's so great. That dude is unbelievable. Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, Rhonda Cox, a ram is a male sheep. A female sheep is a you. <laughs> How do you say it? I have, I have no idea. Ew. And the baby is a lamb. That conversation reminded me of Frank and Stan's asking about yeah. the hen, the chicken, and the rooster. Something's missing, all right? Yeah. You. You. Who is it you? You. Like Y-O-U. Yeah. You. Uh, a ram is a male sheep. A female sheep is a you, and the baby is a lamb. I thought they were all three different. So did I. I thought they were different species. Wow. That's why they look so familiar. <laughs> I mean, that's like you saw me, Lauren Harp, and you're like, you're like, oh, those people are not related. Clearly, and you're like, no, that's a regular, that's an American family. You go, oh, God, I don't know what I was thinking. I just love, I just love it when people correct. Like that's something that happened because I grew up around FFA people in Oklahoma, so the, the people are like, no, 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 listen, it's a calf. What is it's it? A, F- like what FFA? What is that? Future Farmers of America. Oh yeah. They, they have they wear the blue corduroy. Did you know jackets. that? No, I love that you said that. Like that yeah. was a super oh, common act. I just thought it was a super common yeah. thing. Like it's yeah. the YMCA or something. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a <laughs> yeah. You guys don't you guys don't know about Future Farmers of America? I yeah. do not. I mean, you guys are living under a rock. I know. I, guess. I know. We don't go to college at Love's gas station. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, they're good enough to sponsor the Oklahoma City Thunder. That is true. Who is a world, hey, I'm a big world round world renowned brand. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Love's fan. I'm a big Loves fan. Uh, I think they could update some of them. A, a couple bit. of them. A couple of them you go into, you're like, yeah, I could, you're, you're better than this. No, I mean, you've the been lo- spoiled by Bucky's lately, dude. I mean, no, no, true. Love is, because Loves is all I would ever go to. It's the safe, like when you're driving at night, it's like the safest. Mm-hmm. Anytime you feel the safest at Loves. Uh, but you go to some and they got like Hardy, they have like all the stuff. Yeah. And then you go to some other ones and you're like, eh, you're like, y'all need to. They just have a Cinnabon that's always here. closed. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. A.J. Fox. It's a good name. The phenomenon that gives the moon the illusion of not spinning is called tidal locking. The moon takes 27.322 days to orbit around Earth. It also takes 27 days to rotate on its axis, which results in the moon appearing like it's not spinning. So do we see another side of the moon? It just, oh, would we ever? I guess we never would. It's rotating, but it's, we're just kind of locked in with it. Oh, okay. Hmm. You know? So if we could shake it a little bit, we'd be like, ooh. <laughs> I wonder if we saw the other side of the moon. Well, I think somebody I read somebody sent me a comment. This is why it's a big deal when uh, when astronauts would go there to see the dark side of the moon. Yeah. Because it's just the side that we don't get to see yeah. very often. That's know? crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that. And it's that. like, how, I wonder what's going on over there. It's Who knows? Like, yeah, because the sun. But would the sun ever hit that side? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's it's still it's still rotating. Yeah, it's just dark to to uh, Earth. Yeah, but if the people that like live over there, they'd be like, "No, it gets light all the time over." Here. And you're like, "Well, we don't." Like that's what I'm saying. If there's a whole family, there's you know a bunch of people over there. So basically, there's only like 35 people that have seen the other side of the moon. I think less In than person. that. There's only 12 people yeah. that have. I just know that from Brian Regan bit. But 12 yeah, people yeah. have walked on the moon. Well, yeah. there's but there's people that have not landed. On, there's like people Apollo- that have orbited around it. Like Apollo 13 didn't land on the moon. That's true, but they did get to see the dark side of it. Thanks, Ron, Ron yeah. Howard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is he dead? No, no, no. I just okay. like to, just in case. Uh, you never know when this is going to come out. I'm saying that's so. right. You got you to make sure the time, it doesn't, you know, you don't time stamp yourself. Kay, Kala, Kayla, <laughs> Kayla Byram. Kayla Byram. Kayla Byram. I hate that when I scream at my TV, y'all can't hear me. The blonde exercise woman 
that Nate was trying to think of is Suzanne Summers. Mm. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Thank there you. she is. Yep. Thank Kayla you, did Kayla. spell Summers wrong, though. Oh. I just want to throw sorry. that out there oh, so we, you know, we're not total idiots. So. Oh, S-O-M-E-R-S. Mm-hmm. Well, who would? I don't know. I think Suzanne spelled it wrong. Didn't she have a Nickelodeon <laughs> show, or am I crazy? I don't know. I, you know what? I feel like she did have a Nickelodeon show. See, and I'm I'll look crazy. into that. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I certainly didn't know her from health, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nubbyone. It's fun watching Aaron the Gout Weber slowly clap back at Nate for being an old man over the course of the podcast. Nate consistently tries to be the smart guy, but the Aaron podcast is starting to get some clout. They like it. Would you call me old? I wouldn't oh. call you that old. I don't care. We'll call Brian. Old. I don't think yeah. you try to be the smart guy very often. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think. Look, I just what I sound comes out smart. You know. I uh, mean, uh, if he thinks you try to be the smart guy, what I sound, even that sentence. <laughs> what I sound comes out smart. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, what is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just love. I just love that somebody's like, "Oh, Nate always tries to sound smart." It's like, "Oh, well, man, I have four specials for you that just, yeah. that just go the <laughs> yeah. other way." Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'm not traditionally. I'm not traditional smart. I'd right. say that I can't talk. You use big words. I'm out. Like, there's a lot of stuff like mm-hmm. that. I don't know. But I mean, anything I do, like that's why, I, like, if I ever talk to like anybody, like agents or business managers like i'm always like what like just tell me what does that mean though like yeah. you know it's like well it means this okay right i mean after i say that it's not like i just say it on the podcast i literally say it to people's face i go but what does that mean right and they're like oh we're just gonna hand it to you okay yeah and you don't have trouble understanding the concepts it's just sometimes the language is the language, language i don't know right concept yeah the concept is like yeah I can move around make decisions mm-hmm but then, but you get you get me in a corner. That's why you know college is about trying to trick the dumb. I mean, I, have, I feel like you're country smart. Like you like you don't you, you don't use the vocabulary. Yeah, which kind of like people go, oh well, he doesn't know the thing, so he doesn't know. Like no, 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 I know how to how people trick people, how people move people. Like mm-hmm. you know all those things. Yeah, and you're right. And you know how how those things work. You also know how to be super competitive. Yeah, you know how to better your like you know all those things. I so you know, know how to get yeah. there. You just don't know how to say it I don't the way that the, they want you to say it. Yeah, because I think that's a a shield for – I'm not saying everybody, but it's a lot of – like it's a shield that you're like – you can just say big words. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. been in an argument with someone, and they just start saying big words, and you're kind of like, I don't even know what you're saying, so you're kind of out of it. And I was that's like a safety because right. it's like, well, all you got to do is say bigger words than me, and if I'm not educated like you are, and I'm like, I don't I've, – I've never – you know, I don't read the dictionary. That's what I say to him, which is a dumb statement. I mean, you, that doesn't even help you. That's funny, though. Yeah. I go, I'm sorry, I've never read the dictionary, everybody. Encyclopedia. That's my big word. Uh, Kaki Allison. Kaki Allison. K A K K I Allison. We had to flush our cereal too. It never all went down in one fell swoop. That's an interesting thing to explain to your rich garbage disposal friends. I'm glad to hear someone else had to do it. Yeah. You had to flush cereal? Oh, yeah. Because we didn't have a garbage disposal. So my dad would say, you got to flush it. And I would almost throw up every time because it was just so gross. Pouring water and Cheerios in the toilet <laughs> is just, it's, oh, it was, oh. I'd close my eyes and just do it. <laughs> you hear it, and then you just flush it. You're like, <laughs> you run out like. I mean, you got to learn out. I mean, someone just walked in our house at that point. They're like, "Why do you? Why do you have a bowl in the bathroom?" You're like, oh. "I just imagine you having people over and be like, hey, everybody's having cereal, and you're like, hey, they're like, what do I do with this?'" And you just go, "I don't know. You just go in the bathroom. Yeah. You explaining it to people." Yeah, we have a party. Someone goes to the bathroom. They're like, you know, there's like seven Cheerios in that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we make our. Brandon Underwood, the AIDS candy situation reminded me of when I worked for AT&T in the early 2010s. The company introduced a mobile payment application called ISIS. (laughs) They later rebranded it because of obvious reasons, but I vividly remember talking people into signing up to join ISIS because it was the future. (laughs) 
<laughs> there it is, the wallet of the future. The ISIS mobile wallet. That's great. That's great. This is an mean, official can, press release from AT&T, 2013. I mean, can you imagine putting your heart and soul what? into a project, just spending hours and hours? I mean, there's a marketing firm that just like, this is it. This is the name. It's clean. It looks so good. It's palindromic. And then, and then just all of a sudden, you're just like, well, guess what, guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know the thing where like, this is the only thing that could stop this? Well, it happened. Stopped it. <laughs> I wonder if there's a guy that's like, no, I think we can still keep, like he... Like the guy that came up with it, he goes, I don't, I mean, where are y'all seeing the resemblance? It feels different. And like, well, it's both <laughs> ISIS. Yeah. He goes, what if you just say ISIS? Is, is. Is, is. is. You go, it's spelled ISIS. No one's going to say that. You're like, well, are, what is ISIS? Let's just openly talk about ISIS. Are they doing, <laughs> if you really dive into it, I mean, what, you know, I don't see how they're any different than a lot. Like, he's just trying to make it seem like he tries to he just talk to his people. All right, look, I, I looked it up last night. I'll be, I think I would join them. <laughs> and so I think we should, you know, keep it. First of all, the color schemes are completely different. Yeah. That is true. That Fonts is true. are different. Yeah, the branding's We're doing much purple. different. There's is not that a, purple? There's not a Toyota pickup anywhere near our That's campaign. Purple. That's a purple. Boom. Benjamin Dukes. Nate has mentioned opening for Chris Rock on the podcast a few times. No one. <laughs> but I don't think he's ever talked about how he got the gig. How did Nate and Chris meet? What led to Nate opening for Chris on his tour? Uh, which will lead us into the other thing. But uh, I m- met him. Uh, I went to Zany's in Nashville. Met him. Uh, our mutual friend Neil Brennan is friends with him. And when he and Chris Rock came to Zany's for the Blackout tour that he went, and he was like working on the tour show before he went and did all the big shows. And so uh, I went down there and uh, met him there through Neil, and uh, we hung out. It was cool and. And then I did. I ended up opening for him for a few cities. Uh, and the first one I did was in Durham, D Pack, which I was just at on my birthday. Yeah. And uh, and so I opened for Chris at that place. And then so that's that's how I met him. And uh, you know, and then and then I did a few more cities with him. But he's a great dude. And uh, you know, they had that Oscars thing. Uh, you know, recording this on Monday, so it was last night. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, Chris did a great job handling that. That is not, that's a brutal thing to try to handle. <laughs> I know. And that's, uh, it's insane, dude. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, it is. You can, whatever you want about a joke, you're like, I don't know, man. You're, it's like, y'all, you, she's had jokes made, y'all have had make jokes about, like, I know you have to have a tough skin, and I know there could be a, a bowling point. It can't be in that moment. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to say something to him afterwards or something like that, but, you know. It made Will Smith look crazy. He did, and I'm a crazy. and I'm and yeah. everybody's a giant, giant fan of him. Mm-hmm. And I do feel bad. Like there's something that you're like something's up, dude. I know. Like and it just it came out in that moment. But to do that to to another person is that's humiliating. That's mm-hmm. worse than the joke. Yeah. Like it's like and I know it's like well she has alopecia and stuff like that and you're like I don't, I didn't know that and I, mm-hmm. I think it's recent. I don't know when she came. It, we're not trying to defend it or whatever. I don't think Chris Rock knew that. He's making a joke in the moment. Like, you know, they've got to know each other. they got to be like, you know, they're just. Right. Not the first time they've been in the same room. Yeah, yeah. This is the point. You go up and you're going to take some shots at you. That's what these, this is, I I truthfully believe. Because like, you know, then Will won that, which I was so excited when he won. (laughs) I've never wanted him to win more than after. I was like, please win. (laughs) Like I think everybody was yes. like, you're like, please win, dude. What are you gonna say? I know. And then he went and said he apologized to everybody but Chris, <laughs> which is insane. I know. And then you know you saw Chris go. He's like, I could. Like you know he could have just just done forty minutes on Will Smith I know. at yeah. that moment. And it's so embarrassing. It's so like you just put me in such a weird position. Mm-hmm. He has no way to protect himself. Because Will walks up like, you know, where it looks like it's a joke. Right. And we're all being funny. Will Smith laughed at the joke. Or it showed him laughing, which yeah. I that doesn't mean he could not be listening and he just kind of putting on a face. And, uh, you know, his wife, uh, J.D. Pinkett, like, she didn't think it. But it's not like his wife is not a celebrity. Either. Like, his mm-hmm. wife, you're, like, super famous. Yeah. You're a celebrity. Like, it's the idea of, like, no one thinks anybody should be mean to someone. No one thinks, like, no one's on board with these jokes and blah, blah, and whatever. But here's a point where you're like, 
Yo, dude, if y'all both have a over a hundred million dollars, then you got to like take it for the us to watch. Like, I know I'm not gonna feel terrible. Yeah, I'm not gonna feel that bad that you just you're sitting so close. You're closer to Chris Rock than anybody. You're closer to the stage. Yeah, they put you up front, uh-huh. and like it's it's crazy. Also, you just produced a show where you hung out with comedians. Oh yeah, like you just produced that whole thing. You're like, oh, I'm glad. like, there's there's video of him in that thing being like, oh, I'm so glad I can understand this art form, and I appreciate. Like, it's like him learning a new thing, and yeah. you're like, well, I mean, clearly you did not learn that much. Because <laughs> well, then he like, came out and said he's a vessel for love, which is unreal. Yeah. Dude. I mean, that's so. The good. speech was so yeah. unhinged. Yeah. You're like, what is he talking about? And they just cheered him, and then like standing everybody o. standing out. It's the disconnect. I, 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 you know, it's I'm in this business, but you can see this business, and you're like. It's you're seeing that other way where it's podcasts or it's YouTube and like these followings and stuff like that. I'm mean, not doing stuff with Netflix. I, Netflix, I'm a big fan of, but I mean, I truly think that. I mean, a lot of these streaming places are just figuring it out, but that like Hollywood world, you know, it's like if if they don't, it, you're like you if y'all don't realize like how crazy you look because mm-hmm. it's like it felt like everybody there supported Will Smith. And everybody watching at home supports Chris Rock. Well, there's way more people supporting Chris Rock. Yeah. And no one's either way. It's like, it's not beyond the joke. It's like, you can't, I get you can't be mean to someone, but hey, we're going to pay you a ton of money. How about you? All we ask is don't slap someone yeah. <laughs> during the Oscars. That's it. Yeah. We will make you family a billionaires. You're, you want to be a billion worth of almost a billion dollars? We're going to do that. Mm hmm. All we ask, you can go to jail. They go to they do <laughs> anything. You, do, you break, kill someone. You, break, you do whatever you want. Just during the Oscars, just not slap. <laughs> just, if you don't mind, just don't slap. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, he'd probably answer and go, "Yeah, why would I ever do that?" Yeah. And you're like, "You're well, you'd be surprised. you will be surprised. Give it some time. <laughs> I know right now you're doing Fresh Prince, and it doesn't seem like you would ever get to that point. But you got a long career ahead of you." So just always remember, don't slap, you know. Even the thing he said, Denzel said, he's like, the devil comes at you at your, uh, what are the strongest moments or the mm-hmm. highest moments or whatever. Yeah. And uh, which, is a, which is a great thing to say. But you're like, how do you say that? And I love Denzel Washington. Like, but it's like, so Denzel says that. How do you say that and then not go, and I should have, like, how do you not apologize to Chris Rock? I know. I, how do you not, like, how do you not just walk off and just go like, I, I, this is, I'm mortified. He yeah. just went and sat back down. It's crazy to just go and sit back down. All right, finish the show. Yeah, I mean, you know? he was the most professional. Yeah. Literally, I mean, like, how scatterbrained you have to be, first of all. I mean, just to get a slap. I mean, to just if the wiring in your brain is all there mm-hmm. from that, just to have to continue to just keep, like, all right, I got to get back into the joke that I was starting. He really took that punch, too. I mean, he, yeah, dude, uh, he took did it on the awesome. chin. Yeah. Chris Rock did awesome. Like he did, he could win. Didn't down even a road. drop the note card. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, were still, I didn't notice that. He's yeah. Will Smith is heavier, bigger than him. Way bigger. Uh, I think he's, there's a picture of him with an MMA training. Like I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. he's Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, he learned how to punch. You're like, dude, that's well, clearly he, not. Yeah, well, he slapped him. <laughs> yeah, it was which a slap. is you know worse than a punch. And then slapping is just. It's so disrespectful. It's also crazy. There's no security. None. I watched a clip today of TD Jakes on Instagram, and I looked in the background, and there's like five security guards around him. All there's like three in the front row, like three guys in the back. I'm like, how does a pastor in Dallas who's around church people have more security because than people in the Oscars? The security's behind them because no, because this is how crazy of a thing that was. No one would have, no cop would have ran up and stopped him. Nobody on earth would have. There's no, that's why Rock just, there's no moment of him thinking, I'm, he's about to hit me. Because Will Smith's walking up there, he's laughing and he's like, blah, blah. Right. There's, there's a trust that you have that, you know, especially as entertainers, like, how, like, how do you, you know these award shows are this? You know that it's like they're going to make jokes. You, you, you know they're going to do whatever. I, I look, she has alopecia. Like, yeah, that's inappropriate. But you're like, I don't know. If, I, I don't think Chris Rock knew that. Like, he, he made it off joke on the side and just did it. You can't just go do that, dude. That's your big. People realize like, you're one of your big fears of on stage. And I think of it, and I don't, and I don't. You say anything. I'm not trying to make you know, do get a rise out of anybody. But when you're up there, like the lights are in my face, I can't see. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you can see little glimpses and stuff. You can't see a ton. And so I don't know if someone's going to – like, I, mean, I think about it all the time. Someone could walk up to the stage. You've had it happen. I've had it happen. And uh, and you don't know that they're there. I mean, sometimes you can see, sometimes, but a lot of times you can't. And these bigger places we're getting, I have no idea. So, like, someone could just – they could do whatever they want. And there is a fear that you're in a room with just the most trust ever – that you're like, I, everybody's cool, right? Because I can't see you. And I'm talking to all these people. And all it takes is one person. And they'd be up there, you know. And that, But that's even a stranger. You at least would might be like that. Will Smith, who you probably know. Yeah. You're going to be like, oh, all right, man. Sorry. You know, like, oh, making fun. And that's been boom. done so many times. You walk up and fake anger as a bit. Yeah. That happens all the time, I feel like. So that's oh, what yeah. everyone thought it was. But he's also yeah. not an angry. Like, you, you're you not thinking, oh, like, he's a funny guy on on screen. So you're like, oh, he's going to do a thing. He uh, He's a nice, sweet man is what you thought until <laughs> le- then you're like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean. I, everybody liked Will yeah, Smith. Yeah, he's like, a vessel for love. He's a vessel for <laughs> love. I mean, love. yeah, it was insane, dude. It's. I mean, they, yeah, they gave him the award. They they stayed in ovation. They cried for him. You're like, you just want to go. Uh, you want to go like just all right. If you want to feel bad for Jada Pinkett that she shouldn't yeah. have done it, he shouldn't have made that joke about her. You're like, well, show me some sympathy for Chris Rock too. <laughs> just like just be like, you know, like some like a lot of people are saying like, well, let's just say both are bad. Then that's fine. Yeah. But you can't like in that situation, like it's still one's words and one's like you just slapped a dude yeah. in front of the the biggest award show in mm. history. Right. And the most, you know, the our, the most famous comedian and probably one of the most and the most famous actor. Yeah. And you just like your chumps. And as comedians, we take it as like, look, like we're just this sideshow. That you're like, well, you know what, dude? We're the ones that have to create everything. Yeah. And that's what, like, you look at, like, Chris Rock, he had he has to create everything. Comedians have to write all their information. They have to sell it. They have to write it. They have to do everything. Where, you know, uh, actors, you're like, and it's hard. You got to get in these mindsets. I mean, clearly, he can't get out of whatever mindset he was in for this movie. <laughs> so I guess it is pretty tough. <laughs> That's like what they always say about like Jared Leto or Leto. Like, and I, I love uh, 30 Seconds to Mars. Yeah. Just that, that one song. <laughs> just that I watch the song. video all the time. Yeah. Like, I, the one it's on, so well, they're on Iceland. Yeah. Iceland. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, the yeah, best. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's so great. But, uh, but like, you know, he's in like character the whole time. And you're like, well, you got to deal with that. Like, that's, that's a lot that you're like, if you're another actor, you're like, hey, what's up, man? And then he's like, hello. And you're like, uh, you know, it's like, well, then I just wouldn't be around him unless he's on. <laughs> You know, be like whatever, dude. You want to get in your space, like, but like, yeah. Don't take it weird. Like, I would, I don't want to see you outside of us acting because I think it's crazy that you can't uh, be a little normal when we're not shooting for I don't know twelve hours, four day. Like, you know, it's not like they're uh-huh. they have like ten minutes off and then they're back. It's like he, you have a good twenty four hours probably off. Mm-hmm. Or something at some point. I'm even cool with you being like that on the way to the set, but on the way home, like, can just switch it off, yeah. just switch it off yeah. and sleep, and let's, let's start it. Again. But right, but look, if he if that's his mindset, and he right. and he is awesome, so like, yeah, he seems healthy, and yeah, it seems like, yeah, well, it seems like, look, he he dives into all that stuff, and like, I'm, you know, whatever, go do. I get it, I get staying in that mindset, you know, but it'd be all like with these, you know, that you just would be like, yeah, dude, I'm not gonna. But I would rather not even meet you really outside of outside of us being on the thing. I don't yeah. want you to. If I'm getting food, just wait till I yeah. get away because I don't want you, you know, coming back. Hello, <laughs> you mind passing me the peas? And you're like, well, oh, God. You're like, hey, Jared. He's like, it's Tommy. And you're like, all right, man. You know, there's a lot of normal people around, so maybe, you know, all the workers are like regular people, so maybe don't do this. Yeah, it seems weird. He sh- they should get his own section. Mm-hmm. He should get his own like, like a cage, like a character actor section. Yeah, that's like a, a char- character as a character actor. There should be a. F- there, there sh- I would think there should be a fence for character actors, <laughs> and then they build Ch- it. Chicken wire fence. So you way. know, do not feed yeah, the character. You just actors. see him in there like, boo, boo, and one's like, ah, he does it for two months, and you're just in that. He's like, right, they're just hitting the wall. None of them have a normal world they're even in. Yeah. And I, but I, you're like, yeah, dude, you're going to get the best performance out of you. Right. Well, we're going to put you in here because we do have people that are making $40,000 a year. Mm-hmm. And they're, and I don't think they should have to uh, be yelled at by a chicken 
uh, a guy that's getting paid fifty million dollars for this movie, and I have a single mom over here that does the lighting, and so I just think she shouldn't have to figure out how to talk to a chicken, if you don't mind. So just we're gonna put you in that, in that kind of gathering. So whoever wants to do it, we support it. I'd prefer you to do it. Yeah. But at least do it in the gathering right. area. Yeah, yeah. And don't wander around. <laughs> neutral. 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 Area. We got a back area. They got, they got carpet like a casino. Yeah. Like you can walk in this area, yeah. but this is off limits. But this is but you're not allowed out. There's a lot of there's mainly only regular people on this movie. Mm -hmm. It's basically you're a, you're basically a negative percent of not regular people on this movie. So and you're getting paid the most. Which you sell the movie, I'm on board of course, with. Of course. Therefore, go in that gathering. Right. And when you want to go home, we're back up like a horse trailer. <laughs> Open it. You're, you just go in there and you're like, oh, you know, you're just in there for, you know. And then you just, and you decide where you want to go. Yeah. I don't think it's that bad of a No, idea. it's a great they, they idea. Give, they give you a code knock whenever it's time for you to. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. Come on out. Yeah, we're good. You know, I will have a couple people. They dress up and come talk to you, like the character. You know, mm -hmm. if you're playing a medieval character, we'll have a knight come in and give you your Chick Fil A, and just so you can be like, thank you. And, you know, whatever your whatever mood you're staying in. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a bad idea. Oh, I would do that's it. Great. And I think I want to be a character actor. All right. <laughs> The whole podcast crew got a few new things. Laura got the performance jogger mm. with the halo hoodie in a nice cream color. It's soft. She wears it all the time. I have my performance joggers uh, for workout casual days. Viore, it's a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. I'm a big fan of Viore. Uh, I always like them. They're, I think this stuff looks great. You can wear this stuff out. That's the, you know, the idea of this workout clothing stuff is that you can wear it anywhere. And when you go out, I wear it a lot during the day, especially on the road. It's like, for my life, it's amazing. And then for everybody else's life, that's like, I'm sure a lot of people might be working at home or you're, you know, and you had those days and it's like, you know, get up, wear some Viore and you at least get to be comfortable, but you feel, if you go into the door, you don't look like a, just some lunatic that hasn't... <laughs> Yeah, it's the first time out of your year. It's been two years, and you're like, hello? <laughs> you're like, look nice. Website is very easy to order from not cluttered or busy. Seriously, ordering, seriously, order something today. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at vioreclothing.com slash Nate. That is V-U-O-R-I clothing.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to vioreclothing.com slash Nate and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Also, uh, if you've been listening to the show, uh, you know, you've heard me talk about uh, Helix Mattress. We called Justin Helix Mattress just a second, <laughs> just a second ago. Uh, let's talk about Aaron Allform. Okay. You could be a mix. Yeah. I think you can be a lot of things now. With your weight <laughs> loss, you're like, I don't know where where are you gonna be? You're you're more of a love couch now. <laughs> a love sofa. <laughs> it's like we can't, you know, we used to be able to fit everybody on you. And yeah. Now we're like, eh, I gotta put them in the, yeah. you know. But three could get on if they had to. Uh in a in a pinch. In a pinch. <laughs> uh Helix has a new company called Allform, and they are already making the best sofas we have ever seen. Allform is the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of the traditional stores. You can pick a fabric which is spill, stain, and scratch resistant. The color, color of the legs, sofa size, and shape to make sure it is perfect for you and your home. Uh, for the office, we chose the armchair with the sand fabric uh, with the natural wood legs. It's a... Uh, Really comfortable and uh, roomy. I sit in it. I sat in it today when I got home. Uh, she makes the, when Laura belittles me, I do it in the all form. <laughs> so I'm very comfortable. So I can take it because I, I feel nice. You know, they even offer a forever warranty, literally forever. Uh, all, form sofas, all form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. Sofas can take weeks or months to arrive and you need someone to put it together. All form takes just three to seven days to arrive, and you can assemble it yourself. No tools needed. 
to find your perfect sofa or chair. Check out allform.com slash Nate. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. A-L-L-F-O-R-M dot com slash Nate for your new favorite sofa. That is 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Now, we would all say that an electric bike is probably too expensive, right? Wrong. Finally, there's an e-bike made for everyone. It is electric e-bikes. Uh, they start at just $9.99, which is the wow. super low end of, uh, of the spectrum. It's on the very low end of uh, way less than the competition. Fastest growing e-bike company in the U.S. They wow. come a ship free. They're customizable. They're fully assembled. You just pull them right out of the box, put that battery in. It is so cool. The battery's hidden away. There's an LCD display with your speed, the range, adjustable power level. Uh, there's thousands of five-star reviews, so you don't have to take my word for it. Go check it out. You can go 45 miles at 28 miles per hour on this thing. Mm-hmm. You charge it up, you go 45 miles. That's uh, a crazy range. That's fast, too. And like 28 miles per hour on a bike? Fast. I bet most people wouldn't go that because they'd feel uncomfortable how fast it is. They sent us one. We're giant fans. Uh, and obviously more eco-friendly than a car. Oh yeah. So this is a great, if you're thing. in a city world. I mean, dude, this just is take that new, around all weekend. The, yeah. This is the new future for the, the city. Oh, for sure. So join the affordable e-bike revolution, go to electric ebikes.com. Use code Nate to get a free foldable, uh, mountable bike lock with any bike purchase. That's a free bike lock. When you use code Nate at L E C T R I C E B I K E S.com. Oh, man. We got a new routine. We talked about this a lot. Laura made us a little cup of athletic greens. Yep. How'd you like it? Tasted I mean, good? It was, I, it was good. It was surprising how good it was. You yeah, just yeah. put one scoop in out of the water, shake it, drink it. It's good for travel. It's good on the road. Start every day with it. It's got one less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, everything your body needs to be healthy in one little powder. That's all you need. Clear out that cabinet full of stuff. Get some Athletic Greens. The subscription comes with a year's supply of vitamin D. Right now, it is time to reclaim your health and help your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Uh, Go to athleticgreens.com slash Nate to get a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional Laura would insurance. Make, Laura would make me do, she wants me to do the vitamins. Yeah. Not a fan. Never no. even opened them. Oh, no. Yeah. Seems Why like, would you? Seems like a lot to have to swallow that. I know that sounds <laughs> dumb, but you're, yeah. I won't ever do it. And I've, mm. and like when you first drink these athletic greens, not to, it's like, you know, I'm always like, you're always like a little like, I don't know, dude. Like, yeah. and then you first time you taste it, you're like, hey, and it's like, just do it. And then you're like, oh, you know what? This is great. Yeah. yeah. And it feels nice to be like, all right. It feels healthy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It, it just feels it's good. Nice. Last one here. Uh, for many people getting financially healthy, we talked about nutritional yeah. health. Yeah. Let's talk about financial health. You got to drop the weight of credit card debt. Where does it even start? I mean, how can you start? It's this never ending cycle of debt. Go to Upstart. They can help you pay off your existing debt quickly and easily with a personal loan so you can start living your life. They don't look at your credit score alone. They consider other things like your income, your employment, other information that you provide in your loan application to get a better rate you can check your rate without affecting your credit score in just five minutes. You got nothing to lose. Just check it out for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can even get funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loans. So find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate. Don't forget to use that URL to let them know we sent you. It's going to help us. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information is provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this week, uh, <clears throat> we, have a, we have a fun one. Uh we're going to talk. I don't know, kind of out of it. I was like, yeah, we're already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can, I, can I ask y'all something that made me think yeah. of it, that electric e-bikes? Have you seen this debate going on online? We're a little late to the game, but there's a big debate going on. Of In the United States, do you think that there are more wheels or doors in the in the whole country? If you had add up including all bikes, we, including bikes, including everything. Motorcycles, yeah. 
everything in general. More wheels or doors? I think doors. More doors. You think there are more doors? 100% more There's doors. more. There's more <laughs> doors. Think about one person's house. There's three times the doors versus cars they have. Okay. Every person. I think you have a lot more wheels in this house than you're thinking of. Well, what wheels are you... I mean, like... Uh well you got the wheels you got your cars you got yeah. uh, office chairs four wheels two cars the- so we have eight wheels okay we got that electric bike ten wheels there you go Laura's got a bike twelve wheels yeah the lawnmower or something out Harper's there probably got a bike. it's got uh, wheels yeah. think about all the wheels on uh, Harper's toys you got Lego yeah. wheels yeah you got all these chairs here that's uh, are we counting gears too. Do well, gears count as well, wheels? Well, this is also this is also depends upon how you how you define uh, wheels and doors. I already don't. <laughs> Who, <laughs> where's this debate bad. happening? It's happening all over Twitter. It's all over really? social media. Oh yeah, it was the talk of the town a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm just late <laughs> to the game here. Yeah, I just want to hear what y'all thought. It would be. I thought it was obviously wheels. Oh no no! I think if you you're you're having to like pull a lot of strings to make all these wheels beat the doors. I don't know. The doors come out of the gate. I mean, you just think about like, dude, there's doors. There's two doors here in just this room, the bathroom door and the way to get out. Okay. So it's like, you, you have so many doors that now you're, you're going to be, well, there's 12, there's 12 wheels. In there's here. 15 wheels in these, in these chairs. The three of us are sitting on. Yeah. That, but that's what I mean. So you so, at the end of this podcast. Or maybe 12. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So far. We, so yeah. it's, that's just saying, but you're having to literally go chase down every wheel to be doors. So it's like, yeah, well, I don't think in the scenario you have to collect all of them in the country. This is just a, you know, I know, but I don't think you can even count all the, like there's a Michael Jordan car over there that has four wheels on it. So there you go. Like, there you okay. go. So that's what I mean. So the the, the argument kind of gets to like it's it seems to me like it's a will person trying to beat a door person, and the door people have them beat clearly, and the will person's like, okay, it's but cheating. I didn't you forgot I didn't mention that your your chair that rolls back and forth that's four. You're like, okay, dude, all right, yeah. all right. I guess yeah, I guess if you add that, oh, there's a lawnmower. You're like, all right, so you're not talking about obviously what people think of wheels. Yeah, when you say just wheels, yeah. no one's even going to think. Lawnmower, don't forget yeah. lawnmower. You know. Yeah, well, that that's why it's a fun hypothetical. Look at all the hotels, hotels in Vegas. Oh yeah, did you forget this guy's Hot Wheel collection? Did you yeah. forget that? A Lego makes millions I mean, of toy think wheels about a, hotel, a year. Though, how I many am... doors? There's there's multiple doors in every hotel, and these Vegas hotels have thirty thousand. Do- I don't know how many rooms they got. <laughs> but each one of those each one of those doors <laughs> oh, 30, has a roller chair behind it. Yeah, that is true. There's a, there's an office chair in every in every room. This wheel thing is in. You got to think. To me. You yeah. got to think that every car wheel wheels win cars. So there you yeah. go. There's always going to be Four at wheels. most well, it's a cars. tie. Well, at most it's a tie. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's neutral. No, because a lot of cars only have two doors. Yeah, but they all have at least four. And wheels. a motorcycle doesn't have a door. There you go. I just think wheels wins in a landslide. No, I think so. I would. I just look at it as like that's fine. Wheels might win. But the time it's going to take you to figure out how many dumb wheels you're going to make up that's going to beat doors, like I'm already, I got so much money in the door world that I don't even. You're going to be tired. You barely make it to the <laughs> debate center because you'll be just worn out of just being like, "Wheel, there's a wheel, wheel." You just, you know, you're like Jared Leto, just in character, wheel, wheel, wheel. There's one wheel. Yeah, you know, that's what I think. All right. I mean, but it's good. Good things. Fun. Stuff's getting solved on Twitter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, samurais. Sam- oh, ninjas and samurais. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about. You're this. pumped about it. I. I mean, as a kid, I was both ninjas and samurais. Yeah. At, for Halloween. Yeah. Oh, and really? I, I went a little further than probably a, a kid at that age should have gone. Oh, yeah. I was real excited about In it. In what way did you go go too far? I mean, probably age. Probably one because like younger, oh. younger, you're a ninja because you think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. But then like you get older, and you're like, I'm gonna be like a mature, like a samurai. It yeah. feels very mature. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're like, I remember dressing up as a samurai and somebody looking at me and be like, it's about time. Like, like yeah. they they don't say it, but it's like that first time they were like, hey, yeah. it's about time to hang this up. Yeah. Just, like you're walking with your friend that's <laughs> in regular clothes, and you're and he's like, I don't know, dude. How big was Beverly Hills Ninja for you? Uh, it was it was huge. 
It was huge. <laughs> it was a, it was the one time the big guy got the, got the suit. We got, right. The big guy got the tap. What did that movie theater look like? like you just, <laughs> a lot of popcorn sold that day. They go to their kids. They go in there, and you're like, look at them, boys. We can all be one. <laughs> It's a good. It's. A, I mean, it's. It's a good movie for regular body people. That's right. Because I mean, I, I don't have a body for a ninja. Mm-hmm. No one. No one has it. You know, ninjas have their bodies are crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to see. Well, they're compact. Like, the whole thing is like they're compact and tiny, and they're supposed to be acrobatic. That's like the whole thing. So a ninja would be like a tightrope person, or a, like in the circus. So a ninja, yeah, yeah. like if the ninja guy the ninja game, he's probably going to do circus. Well, the whole thing work. with the ninjas, they're supposed to be very like. Uh, it's like stealthy. Is that not what he would do? It's like when a football player becomes a broadcaster. Yeah. A ninja will just become I a mean, circus performer. There's a point where a ninja is, is, you know, he's sitting there with his parents. He's got his sword. He's just eating. You know, he can't afford to live on his own because you know, he's just, he's because he's always a vigilante. I mean, he doesn't get paid. Ninjas are poor people. So. Yeah. And he's eating cereal and a steak, having to pour it in the toilet. And his mom's just like, how long do you think you're going to do this? His, his, he's got his... Mass just kind of up here. That sword just sticking out behind him, and he's like, "I don't know." You know, your your aunt was in a circus, and she still knows some people over there. <laughs> you can you. do all the, you know, you could do all the stuff. We can get you in the union. Get you in the union. You can ride that motorcycle around in that tube, and you know, they'd be lucky to have you. <laughs> and he goes, "I don't know, mom. This is what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. Chase this dream. We got to paint over all the." St- Throwing star so ninjas marks. don't get paid. Ninjas are real, though. Yeah. Very much real. Yeah. So ninjas okay. were the specialized assassins, saboteurs, and secret agents of medieval Japanese warfare mm. who were highly trained proponents of the martial arts, uh, especially what later became known as uh, ninjutsu or the art of the ninja. Ninjutsu. Mm. Ninjutsu. ninjutsu. Yeah. Okay. You Which know that, a lot about that? That you- becomes a very broad term as history goes on. Cause like we like there's there's like ninjas now and it's very like there's like American ninjas. Oh, there are. Yeah, like, like real ninjas. Yeah. Well, like there's like uh like they take the kind of the basics of it and then they like they kind of like who are they doing it for? I mean, just to basically sell karate classes. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. Like that's where it, yeah. it morphs into that. Yeah. But like uh one of the most famous dudes. Do you see the movie Bloodsport? No. It's a uh, it's a movie about this guy named Frank uh, Dukes. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it was basically it's it's one of the most amazing stories. Yeah, because he he gets in this Hollywood people's ear and tells them the story about how he fought in this underground, full contact thing called a kumite. Yeah, where like people die and it's crazy and wild and basically it's like MMA. So you have all these styles. So you have like Muay Thai and you have sumo. You have there's no weight classes. It's, and he tells the story about how he was like a world champion. He was never beaten. He had like the fastest knockdown time, the fastest knockout. Um, he beat like 156 guys in a row. Yeah. This whole thing. And so they get so excited about it. They make a movie about it. John claude Van Damme is like stars in it. It's like one of his biggest movies. Yeah. And then it comes out and then everybody just goes, oh, he was lying about the whole yeah. thing. Like, nope, they can't find any proof that it's real. But this guy founded this whole like ninjutsu uh-huh. system. It's like it's 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 one of the wildest, craziest things. And he looks like he literally looks like the guy from Napoleon Dynamite. You know when yeah. they go and study with the guy yeah. with the American flag pants. So it's like, do I need to even watch this movie now? <laughs> oh, it, dude, the movie's it? amazing. Yeah, the movie's incredible. Yeah, it's it's literally one. Of, it has one of the best bad guys. But I now know at the end of it, they're like, nah, no, no, that was true. Oh, and no, no, there's no, way true. more to it. Than but that. you but you don't know that none of nobody knew that when they were filming the movie. I didn't know that. Before you told me right now, <laughs> when I didn't, but it's like this was a movie that I grew up in my childhood. With, yeah, that it was the, one of the most amazing. Like I loved it so much. I watched it like with my dad. Like it was yeah. one thing yeah. my dad and I bonded over. Yeah, blood you know, cause, sport. Because he breaks like one of the things is he. It's like a. It's called a death touch. Is what it's yeah. called. He does this thing where they. It's like a stack of bricks, and they pick a brick, and he's able to. Oh, spoiler alert. He's able to. He's I think able he already to, did it. He's able yeah. to smash. <laughs> he's able to hit the brick, the pile of bricks, and make the brick that they pick explode. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Okay. So it was a big part of why you liked this movie that you thought it was a true story. 
No, I just it's just a great movie. Oh, so you didn't care whether it was a true story or not? Oh no, no, I I don't. I don't it didn't break your heart when I, you found out it was all. I don't go into nonsense. Batman and thinking, oh man, I wish more billionaires were like this. Yeah, that's true, but uh, th- they didn't sell the rights to Batman telling them that it was a true story. As far as you know, so this is a little bit different. <laughs> it's exactly, a like that's different. a good analogy at all. Wait, you're <laughs> saying in the movie they say it's not true? You're saying no, no, no. In oh. the, the movie, but like they at the end of the movie, it's like it's based off of a guy. So like you know the thing where like. Yeah. Frank, you know, like uh, at the end of a bio, like yeah. a biopic, they're like, yeah. "This is what he did. This is all the things that like." They, there's this long screen of all the records and stuff yeah. that he holds, basically saying like it's a real thing. All fake. All fake. Oh, so all it's fake. not like it's a spoiler in the movie. It's no, 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 no. It's like, but it's oh, that when did it's, that come out? It's like, it, right I mean, in what? like the like the night early. I know, 90s. no, but when did the they that come out that it was all fake? Almost like a like very soon after because oh, they wow. couldn't they couldn't find anybody. That had fought like, hey, if you beat 156 guys and this yeah. tournament goes like every four years, yeah. like it's a very secretive thing. Yeah. But they're like, hey, we know a bunch of fighters. <laughs> like, did you fight in this thing? No. Did you fight in this thing? No. Yeah. Do you know anybody that's ever fought in this thing? No. It's like we're a pretty tight knit community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be like if somebody come up and like, hey, yeah. did you pre- I performed this comedy festival and I got yeah. a Netflix deal. I headline Madison Square Garden yeah, last yeah, week. Yeah. You're like, I feel like we know a few people. So he that made up the fight. Made up the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then he comes over after the movie and has this, like, he has, like, a fighting system that he sold to all oh, these wow. people. And I'm going to tell you something. After watching that movie, you're like, I mean, I, I would I'd sit in on a class. Yeah. Even just hearing about it, I think I would I would take ninja classes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's, like, a whole yeah. thing is, like, he, he gets. I literally, as you were talking, I was like, I think I want to do some kind of. Like, uh, like martial arts. In, in martial arts. Mm-hmm. I think I do. I think I would like to just like to learn how to do stuff. The only my problem is, is you, you're, you're sitting there like a little too old to be just like, I got another dude, just I got to like lay my, you know, I got to get him in some, you know, and you're like all over each other and you're sweating. Not in like the weird way, but you're just like, you're like, I'm too old for this dude. Like, yeah. I want to be like, what's one where you don't have to be like, I don't want to be on the ground with you. Like two, I don't want to fall on the ground and then have to like get out of a position. Like I feel too old past that. Okay. Maybe I could get over it. Uh here, lay on me right now, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, I mean, yeah. But there but what like, would you like to be able to do? Just defend yourself if somebody tries yeah, to slap I was thinking, you on stage. Yes. If someone tries to slap me on stage. But it's like you want to like have it's like, is it kickboxing? Do they have to go? They don't have to go down, right? Taekwondo stays, stands up. Oh yeah, boxing. They, they you're never on the ground in no, boxing. No, yeah, yeah, boxing. I, yeah, boxing could be good. Yeah, Dustin Chafin. It was a golden. Uh, it was a golden, golden glove gloves. when he was a kid. So he knows boxing. And then, but I could do yeah, but kickboxing. So you have a little like you know ninja, you know. If I go, if someone, I just want one person. When I walk away. They go, was that guy a ninja? Yeah. Like, even though everybody's <laughs> yeah. not, no one thinks that. But if I got one guy thinking, God, did I see he a might, ninja? Dude? He might. But but what was it? Taekwondo. Taekwondo. So that's like it's just a kicking There's and a, punching. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. like Muay Thai is kind of stand up too, yeah. but that's a lot of knees and ankles. And I mean, I don't think we need to be messing <laughs> with the mean? joints right about now. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's key, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of like throwing yeah, elbows yeah. and oh yeah, it's like a, it's a lot of using hard bones in your body to hit yeah. soft points. I like that. Down. But it's it's I mean so I could a, do Muay Thai, but I could do Muay Thai, and so I don't have to roll around on the ground with someone or as much. Right. It's like the MMA was like grappling. You're just like I don't know. It's like I, when I did it even back then, I was like I don't like this. Like I don't mm-hmm. like. I feel a you're a little claustrophobic, I, or I guess I was even a little back then. Yeah. And but it's the fact that you're and now you know I'm 43 now, and you're like wow, I, I can't be having some. 30 year old 24 year old man yeah just laying on me on a tuesday well jujitsu is all about shifting met weight. the guy and you're like all right i don't know huh jujitsu is all about shifting weight that's where it all comes it's like the combination of jujitsu and wrestling uh-huh. yeah it's like it's, it's just weight. like movement you know yeah. and momentum yeah our that's center like, of gravity is at our necks I'm so i'd you. like to be able to shift wait so you can around. all right yeah so i can take what was it jujitsu jujitsu or but our muay thai muay thai is is more stand-up Muay yeah. Thai and kickboxing and karate. I mean, like straight up karate yeah. is like that too. And ju- and jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's more on the ground. Like that's more grappling. Oh, oh. jujitsu is. Uh, oh, okay. I keep these are all confusing me. <laughs> but I want to say Muay Thai. Yeah, I that's mean it's elbows and yeah. yeah, yeah. 
I like that. What's the one that the Israeli army uses? What's the... You know what I'm talking about? I mean, they have modern weapons now, dude. No, no, no. They they have like a... a the Krav Maga. Dome. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, that's like a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Where like they, you learn that stuff, and so it's like... It makes people like really... Vi- like even like... Uh, like Israeli women, like that's the like one thing they're like they're like really vicious because they all learn it from like a very young age. Israeli if women do, are vicious. That's my take. Uh, that's my takeaway. Yeah. Is it? Is, it, oh, yeah. is that, you're gonna, <laughs> gonna clut it up? Is, yeah. is that the clip for the week? Yeah, yeah. Just, clip just that. Just yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I ever learn it, I'm not gonna tell you though, because I think that's the secret. We don't let anybody. You know. don't. Yeah, and you surprise people with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. would be fun. That would be fun. You know, well, there's there's people that we know. That I are. encourage people to take the stage. No, I'm joking. I don't know. I, I don't. don't trying do to bait them now. Yeah. Yeah. I go, I dare anybody to walk up here. Anybody here got alopecia? Alopecia. <laughs> just, just just Nate pulls up his pulls up his t shirt and there's just a yellow belt under yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was interesting. You know those masks and those all black outfits that we think of when we think of a ninja. Yeah. Those are that's pretty much a modern creation. Ninjas would have worn common clothing that helped them blend in wherever they are. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, think about just wearing an all-black outfit. Yeah, you would stand out from the crowd oh, pretty yeah. easily. Well, Beverly Hills Ninja. I mean, he is, uh, his brother is running around Beverly Hills in a full ninja suit. Full suit. No one ever notices it. No one ever says anything. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a great movie. I can tell you one thing from childhood. Great. It's so funny movie. One thing from childhood, uh, they do not make geese that big. Yeah. Something I learned at nine years old. Nine years old. Make what that big? Geese. The belt. The 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 outfit is called a Oh, you I mean, probably the, get ninja, one now. ninja ones might be different, but do like, they just change your uniform color? Yeah. Everybody has a white uniform still and you walk in with a blue jumpsuit on. And you go, What are you a blue belt, buddy? You go, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys you guys just have the belt. I have the yeah. whole suit is yeah. blue. I think it would be better to you get you should get this suit. That's more. They should give. How good would that be? Give you a whole suit, whole suit jacket. Yeah. If you're like you it's go like to, the masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more threatening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you have a uh, Chris Rock in Beverly Hills Ninja? Yeah. Oh, he is in there. Mm. Do you have a, a ninja sword or a katana? Uh, I did at one point. Yeah. yeah. That was, those are college days, though. Uh, <laughs> it was all about honor and, and courage. Mm-hmm. Would you carry it around with you? No, no, no. Or do you leave it? Is it like a mantelpiece thing, or does it? Yeah, something... it's like it's it's a reminder. It where well, it was a reminder to always have honor and courage. Always have honor. So while you walked out every door, you looked at that sword and said, "Honor, courage." Yeah. Okay. I, it's embarrassing. I used to tap it before I go out. Oh like, man! Like For, we were champion. Like, you know, you do it like before like econo- uh, like you play like a champion not, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're on your way to economics class, and I'm you t- just a beat. Can I and tell you? It is a real. And it's like, you know, this is Notre Dame, all these warriors. They got to touch that. They go wrestle men on a football field, get people going to real war. And you're, uh, as you pack your suitcase or your backpack, going to, you know. Friendship class. Friendship class. Oh, it's embarrassing. And you just go. (laughs) Friendship class. Honor and courage today. It's embarrassing how many, like, I used to watch. Uh, before football games, I was a I was it's something you learn when you're when you do like Christian you know mm-hmm. the Christian pastors and stuff love yeah. clips yeah like video clips they love them and uh, so when I before when I would play high school football I'd always watch a clip by myself yeah a movie clip and yeah. I'd watch the scene from the Last Samurai oh, yeah. <laughs> when he's in the rain and they're doing sword fighting and he keeps getting yeah. hit and he keeps getting knocked down and get back up and I was like that's how I would watch that clip before I walk out the door. And the worst part is I, I didn't start. I didn't play on my football team. Yeah. So I would watch it just to just just to get psyched up. Just yeah. maybe I might get in. Yeah. And I uh, ah. never did. Let's go, boys. <laughs> uh, that's uh, – you know a lot about ninjas. I, I tried. We did this. Ninjas, samurai, I'm all, I'm all in. Yeah. I love it. I, I, yeah, I like them too. I don't know much about them, but I, I'm a big fan. It makes a ton of sense. I've already wrapped my head around the fact that they're not wearing those – Karate outfits. I mean, we should have known the Ninja Turtles didn't wear anything. No, but they're turtles. They could hide in their shell. That's true. No, think, nobody ever brings that point up mm-hmm. that they're not wearing. That's clothes. the ultimate. They're they're the ultimate concealment is a yeah, shell. Is a shell. Mm-hmm. Well, they think you can't. They're like, I'm invisible, and you're like, all right, well, we can all yeah, see the well. shell. <laughs> 
So there's this, this is a ninja legacy. This is some some lore. They've been credited ninjas with some incredible feats, like removing the pillow from underneath a sleeping enemy. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that? I mean, if he's got sleep apnea, anything's possible. Uh, <laughs> That's what <thing> I've learned. <laughs> with the CPAP mask on. Why would they remove it? Are you going? Is that all it says? That's actually a great question. Why would why would you not just kill the guy? Why would you yeah. need to remove the pillow? Maybe it's like a dead yeah. horse thing. And uh, so ninjas, he's like, he's gonna be very uncomfortable tomorrow. He's gonna wake up with a yeah. sore neck. Dude. Wait till we go see him in that <laughs> two o'clock meeting, and he's just like, "Hey, everybody!" He goes, "Yeah, I don't know. My pillow ended up on the other side of the room last night, and I just can't. I got a crick in my neck." And they go, "Oh, God, it seems like you know, there's a lot of ninjas in this area." And he goes, "Is there?" And he goes, "Yeah, that's one of the things they do. They take your pillow." Look up why they would remove a pillow. Is it like would they remove it and then put it on their face? I bet you it's like a a Godfather thing. Remember how you they leave the horse head yeah. in the bed like a like I can get to you at any moment. Oh yeah, almost like an intimidation. Like if you're yeah. trying to get somebody to do something, that's what yeah. I would do. That would be. But like, how would what did you uh, what did you type in? Ninja <laughs> remove pillow from enemy. <laughs> oh. Which range from moving? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guess who's asking for money again? Wikipedia. <laughs> you know? Make sure you yeah. give it to them. I'm telling you, Wikipedia, I'll give you money if you then take it off of my thing. If you take the ad away. Yeah. I won't give you money if you don't take the ad away. But how would you know? How would you know where to pay and how to pay and when to pay? Once I pay, the ad should be removed. Okay. I know I don't know how internet computer works, but I'm sure we can do a lot of things now. We're going to the other side of the moon currently. Yeah. So if I pay and donate money to you, I'm fine. But you can't you it's can't like, you can't just leave that at the top. Like everything you go look at Wikipedia, it's just the whole page is will you please I can never get past it. It's like I want stuff to It's like Angry Birds, just I want to pay to remove the ads. Oh yeah. It's all I want to do. I'll give you everything. I can't find any reason. I think it's just, I mean. It has to be the, war- hey, I can get to you whenever I want thing. Oh, it's just like sending a message? Yeah. You yes. pull the pillow yeah, out? Yeah, they were created with other incredible feats, which ranged from removing the pillow from beneath a sleeping enemy or assassinating a warlord from below while he sat on the to- on his toilet. <laughs> mm. Well, those, these stories are likely exaggerations. Uh <sighs> I mean, that one doesn't feel exaggerated. Like, that feels... Course, excuse the layouts. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't... Yeah, the... the. I don't even... If you're a ninja, I think you ought to be embarrassed. You go, what do you do? And he goes, well, I only take a pillow out of... Oh, when I'm dead asleep, dude, you can pull a pillow. I lose my pillow on my own in my sleep. And I wake up and it's on the floor. Like, why would I not, not just think that happened? <laughs> Did, there was no one having pillows fall on the ground back in those days? How do you not just go... Hey, you know, the guy just wakes up and, you know, sleep just grabs it, sets it back on the bed and goes back to sleep. Never thinks of it again. You, He's like, I, he goes, I don't, I gotta, I mean, it would take. I gotta fire 30, my housekeeper. It would take 30 times. Yeah, to go, you think it's a ninja coming yeah. in every night? He goes, dude, <laughs> he goes, I, my pillow falls off every night. And he goes like, you talking about like once or twice a week? Now, a month straight. A month straight, I woke up in the middle of the night, my pillow's on the ground, and I grab it and have to put it back. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know how we'd be like, I bet it's a ninja. I don't, and then if someone said they think it's a ninja, you'd be like, ah, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I hope so. Anyway, so like it must be my arm or something. Like no one would even you yeah. need to write a note, put something else under it. Yeah, well, this says that uh, people are so afraid of that in some parts they would put deliberately creaky floorboards in their house they'd have confusing layouts revolving doors hidden trap doors just you know they don't want somebody sneaking in and i think rearranging the bedding yeah i mean it's is that what a a ninja is like a a great mover that's basically (laughs) what they do they're just like we'll come in take your couch put a new couch in you won't even know we're there you're like that's a pretty good service thank you man (laughs) you just do it whenever you want you go we're getting the house don't worry about it give us the address and you wake up and have a new cat. Like you just see them. <laughs> that would be a good ninja, a ninja movement service. And that's the, uh, when am I going to get the couch? We don't tell you, yeah. <laughs> but one day you will wake up and there will be a new couch upstairs. 
And then just in the middle of the night, they got a rope and they open the windows. The couch is going outside and new ones coming in. And it's like no one hears. They turn the lights off as they turn the corner and just, yeah. it's like all very quiet. You wake up, there's a grand piano in yeah. your living room. Oh, like, not a disc get in there. Ninja moving. Thanks. <laughs> Here's some recent ninja stories. The 1998 East Java Ninja Scare was an outbreak of mass hysteria in East Java, Indonesia, in which the local population believed they were being targeted by sorcerers known as ninja, who were blamed for mysterious killings of religious leaders by assassins dressed in black. Mm. 150 to 300 sorcerers were killed in a year. So they thought it was like the ninjas were just taking over. Well, it doesn't sound like ninjas because ninjas don't wear black outfits. That's true. Well, this is 1998. Yeah. Everything's mm. a little more kitschy. Yeah. You yeah. Know, you know, they did it up. But so, but they, all those leaders were really killed. Well, you, I mean, even 150 to 300, but which is quite a range for 1998. Yeah. You should probably count a little bit better than that. Yeah. 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 It's low enough that you should, I you, you can go 1,000, 2,000 people. Yeah. But you can't go, it's a little lazy writing to go, how many people died? You know, good bit. Quite a few. Also, what's going on? More in than you, enough that I should know. Yeah, 150 or twice that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, what's going on in your town where you have 300 sorcerers in it? I think there's just a lot going on, man. I mean, it just yeah. I think that's the weird question. Like nobody's asking that question. Like I don't, I don't think I've ever met a sorcerer. Yeah. It, and y'all got 300 of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, they all not anymore. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> In 2019, a mysterious group of people dressed in ninja outfits have been ringing residents' doorbells around East Java. At first, residents thought it was a simple prank until it was observed that the perpetrators were wearing ninja costumes and were adults. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why would they? That's like the new pillow. It's like they go. It's just ding dong yeah, ditch. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. That's their new, like, just so you know, we can always get to your outside doorbell yeah. without you knowing. So just, we're watching. Just. You go. All right. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Well, how do you know? Yeah. Oh, first of all, if you're ringing the doorbell, how do you know that it's, the, I mean, they don't have the ring camera. Well, this is 2019. I bet a lot oh, of them do. Yeah. Yeah, this is three years well, ago. There's got to be camera footage of that. I think yeah. there might be. I mean, that's. Oh. We're not that kind of podcast. I'm just, well, yeah. <laughs> you don't, we don't put it, video it, I, was, I saw you Google Pillow, so yeah. I was like, I understand. I'd want to <laughs> see how the ninja approached the ring and how he got away. Because it's like, if you see him just like run away like a, you know, very wide need or something, you're like, well, that's not a ninja, dude. Like, I think a ninja would be able to go underneath it and would hit it and you would never see it. I just don't, I don't understand. Like, you, if you steal somebody's pillow, you don't ring a door. Like, I don't know why you would draw attention to yours. Like, yeah, that's not very it. ninja at well, all. Well, you're never going to find it because there's a doorbell ninja. <laughs> yeah, a, there's a, a brand. Company. There's a yeah. There's a brand. It's really messed up. Oh, the SEO. Ring ninja doorbell Indonesia. Oh, maybe you know what? It seems like was it an ad for this ninja doorbell? Like, <laughs> I mean, it should be like a good ad. So, yeah. So we just thought it was a commer- yeah. the commercial was real. You're like, where did you see this? We're like, oh, I saw it on TV. Things the news. You're like, no, 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 that was like a commercial. And they're like, you're like, find out over there. They're like, what? Like they don't know about commercials in there. <laughs> it's not all just like real programming. You're like, no, 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 no. no. They do like commercials and stuff. Like, and that's what I don't. I understand why. Yeah, I would be worried too if you're like, right. golly, dude. It seems like every thirty minutes to an hour. This is happening. The doorbell rings. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you get a number. I don't know, 150, 300. Yeah. Now, what do you know? What do you know about the samurai? A samurai, I'm uh, also a big fan. Like the uh, bigger swords, lots of armor, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but they're not as quiet. No, they're kind of the opposite. They're out in the open. Yeah. Uh, they're, it's a hereditary military nobility. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, and the officer cast of medieval and early modern Japan. This is from the 1100s to 1876. Seven seven hundred years of uh, there being samurai. Wow, they're like it's a it's a big like it's a big honor thing. It's basically like if uh, if comedy was ninja and samurai, ninjas would be improv people, and mm. samurai would be stand up comedians. Yeah. They don't like each other. Oh, they don't like no, each other. No, they don't really? like each other at all. 
Oh, really? Yeah, they they're, they despise. Well, because samurais are very like they're like there's like like a lot of, lots it's of like lineage. a military. Like no, no, it's like lineage. It's like a yeah. it's like a ancestry. There's lots of bloodline. Like there's all these big mm. things. Um, and there's lots of honor. There's codes. Um, and they're and they kind of fight for one goal, a tribe, and they have a code. And ninjas are kind of like not that. They're yeah. peasants. They're um, that's why a lot of times like the ninjas will fight and learn with weird weapons. Because a lot of them are like farming weapons. Like that's where they start and they've just modified them to be able to climb walls, throw like little throwing knives. You know, um, a lot of times uh, they're like gardening tools. Mm-hmm. Like when you see ninja weapons, a lot of times they're, they're literally like, you'll see like the three hook thing. Yeah. The claw like is like a kind of like a hoe. Yeah. So it's like that's what it is. It's, it's all like kind of they yeah. learned how to use everyday peasant weapons like things to make weapons oh, wow. and samurais are very much like ar- like armor tactics yeah um and it's it, they're they're strive for perfection and everything and it's not just in fighting it's like they they ha- like they make tea and stuff like mm-hmm. that and uh they do like they like they're ver- like artists are very uh they they do like calligraphy and stuff it's crazy. It's a whole thing. The samurai were generally highly literate and skilled in mathematics. The samurai culture produced a great number of uniquely Japanese arts, such as the tea ceremony, rock gardens, and flower arranging. They studied calligraphy and literature, wrote poetry, and produced ink paintings. These are Renaissance men. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. So which one are the stand-ups and which one are the improv people? I mean, I like to think that the uh, samurai are stand-ups. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because we're we we think we're better than everybody yeah. else. You know, because uh, we are. But so samurai, they did all that stuff too. Like, so they were like, they didn't know how to fight. They did know how to fight. Yeah, uh, they followed an unwritten code of conduct later formalized as the bushido. Do you know how to pronounce? No, Japanese not a chance. Words? I mean. Uh, if I, I I can read them, but I don't know if they're correct. The ideal samurai would be a stoic warrior mm-hmm. who followed this code, which held bravery, honor, and personal personal loyalty above life itself. At their peak, up to ten percent of Jam- Japan's populations were samurai. Wow, ten percent of them. Were. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. So that's almost like they're police, but like even or it's their military. But it's hereditary. It's like a no, uh, yeah. a nobility class. Yeah, like a, of uh, a it's class like a special class. Are mm-hmm. they like Navy SEALs, or they're even, you know? It's a hereditary thing. Yeah. Oh, like you got to be born. It, it's like it. having royal blood, and yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. And you like have to be a samurai. Under special circumstances, an individual from outside Japan could come and join and fight alongside them. They could even become one. So there's still time. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm working on it. I mean, I got, I got, I got my but applications. That's special, are in. But you got to be, you got to be allowed to do that. Yeah, you got to be welcomed in. Well, then it's not very hereditary, you know. Like, uh, but we also do a thing. We take people from Utah <laughs> if they want to be the same. That's the only other. Like, that's, you know, like. Uh, oh, only four European men ever have done it. So it's, uh, you know, be you make first, exceptions. Be the first American. But it just seems like there's a there's a loophole to be like, my blood, my grand grandfather, all this was samurai. This is John. He's from Idaho. <laughs> and you're like, oh, hey, John. He's like, yeah, they just, you know. I could, I, you know, I had a bunch of miles, so I flew on over <laughs> and came samurai, you know, see what's up. Uh, the uh, the brutality, some of this is, uh, I'm not going to read a lot of this because it gets pretty in-depth, but let's just say some samurais would check if their swords were sharp enough by just randomly beheading people as they passed them by on the road. Yeah. Well, that's a good what? way to find out. Yeah. When, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 2019? No. <laughs> 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 they, they ring your doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any footage of that. You're like, no, they're good, dude. You can't hear them. It's just like once you hear them run away, it's like when you open the door, like you hear those wind chimes. <laughs> like every time you're like, what is that? Was there a samurai in here? Like you always hear ding, 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 ding. ding. And you're like, it's a dead gummit. Is that a samurai? Got it again. So uh, this is, the samurai would often hire ninjas to do their dirty work. Yeah. If they wanted stuff to be done that violated their personal code of conduct, they would just hire a ninja to do it. I, honestly, it seems samurai are a little corrupt. It read at the beginning like it was like this thing, 
Uh-huh. And then it switched to like, let's make sure our sword's sharp enough and we're beheading people. And you're like, well, you can't do that. I don't care what year it is. It, yeah. does, it just doesn't make sense. And once a little bit of that, you know, rumors of that get around, I mean, who's not rolling their windows up as they go by a samurai? <laughs> I think you're just, you got that cranking it up, you know. <laughs> samurai up here, you know, and you I don't, uh, so it seems like they're bad guys. And the ninja, ninja feels like you could trust a ninja more, I think. But you can also pay a ninja to do whatever you want. Yeah, they're so, also like yeah. mercenaries. Oh, yeah, that's true. At least samurai, ha- samurai has a code. I mean, I don't think they do, though, because their code is <laughs> very loosey-goosey. I mean, it just it sounds like they from, always want their short sword to be sharp. Yeah, you go from, <laughs> your code starts at the beginning. Their main code is you got a bit bloodline, but we also, you know, we open to meet people and see if that fits. Uh and then they go into like, but you got a you got a code. You can't break this code. But if you want to break the code, call Ninja. <laughs> you know, say, hey man, uh, you know, I want you to do some stuff. How do I check my swords? We'll just kill the townspeople and just see if your sword is sharp enough. I will say this about the samurai: they were uh, pretty progressive for their time. Women would fight alongside male samurai in combat. In fact, recent archaeological evidence indicates the Japanese women participated frequently frequently in battles, DNA tests conducted at the site of the 1580 battle of some word I won't pronounce. 35 out of the 105 bodies were female. Hmm. It's a pretty good percentage. Where's that movie? Yeah, where is that movie? I mean, female samurai trying to remake Ocean's Eight. Yeah. You just this is it's already there. It's in history. Yeah, because Holly, but Hollywood's going to make these samurais, you know, have like J Lo's body, <laughs> and you're like, that's not going to be true. You know, you're like you're, there's no way thirty five. If thirty five of them out there, it's like these are some oh, strong yeah. women. Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah, they got for some, sure. Got some traps on them. Yeah, they got. Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, to even carry that stuff around. Is probably just the weight of that. I mean, their armor's not, it's not. I, I don't know who I'm on board with here. You know? I don't know if you necessarily have to pick a side. I think you do. Uh, you think? You- <laughs> well, if you want to have a podcast that and we have like- a conversation, <laughs> I, maybe you should. But yeah, if you want to just move on and end it early, then no. yeah, then no, don't pick a side. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll pick a side. I mean, it sounds like Ninja Talk is what that sounds yeah. like. Oh, I can do yeah. whatever side I want. I don't Something know. Sounds like guy comes from Samurai Blood. <laughs> I don't think you could. I mean, I I think a ninja. I at least like that. I know what I'm getting. I don't. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm getting, and I don't know what I'm getting. But I treat them as always. I don't know what I'm getting. In a samurai, I think you would think. Well, I think I'm getting this one thing, and then there's a chance you're getting. Well, sometimes uh, samurais could become ninjas. Because there's like a like a, like the, a lot of times they followed like a, a warlord or something like that. Mm-hmm. So if the warlord dies, you're supposed to you know, not exist anymore. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. but if you decide to not have honor and do that, then you can become a ninja and become a... So the warlords were in charge of these samurais? Yeah. So like, it's kind of like you have one guy, you have houses. So there's one guy is kind of in charge. Mafia? Harry Potter? I mean, yeah. I mean, both are are not incorrect. Okay. I don't know know what Harry Potter is, but (laughs) it's... I know, I mean, I know what it is. I never watched it. You know, the houses are in... And there was so yeah. we actually had a house system at my high school. Yeah, modeled after same kind of no, modeled after Harry Potter almost. Right. Oh, yeah. When you when you go to the Harry Potter, how did you get into Notre Dame? <laughs> there you go. Is that what you went and told them when, as you try to get accepted into Notre Dame? Just you know, I'm a You're sorcerer. Like, what's your uh, so? How was your high school set up? Well, we did it. You've seen Harry Potter, so. <laughs> I was a, you know, I was a wizard, and I was on the wizard team, and then we get over here. And we you, like, have you heard of, like, Gryffindor, Slytherin? Yes. Those, so when you go to the school, you're assigned one of these four houses, yeah. and that's the community that you live in. So is that not unlike what you're describing? I mean, I, would, I wouldn't have started with Harry Potter. I maybe started with uh, Greek life. That's okay. maybe how I would have described okay. it. Okay, okay. But, but, like, so you would go, and so you would... Like your classes would be on uh, Slither. Is that what that means? No, you would still. That's just like the community that you live in and stuff. You still have Wait, classes. Wait, in high school? In my high school, we would. You the, live there? No, no. I thought you were still talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> my high school. Yeah. We have you. They're like the grades were like houses. Yeah. Oh, so it, like 
It's just another way of calling like the. Would you call them Harry Potter names? <laughs> no, they're named after saints. Well, I thought you were saying, you'd call but it was kind of modeled after the same thing, is what I'm trying to say. Probably the Saints first, I would imagine. Okay. You think they did they come up with it right around Harry Potter? I think it started after. Oh, Harry really? Potter. Yeah, the school opened after Harry Potter was already oh, out. Oh, wow! And so. then they're trying to cover their tracks by going, "Well, you some Saints." <laughs> was it a things. was it a Catholic high school? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how were you guys? Did they even have it in the library? Yeah, we love Harry Potter. I mean, we were. I mean, in Oklahoma, they were real sketch. Like you know, we've got witchcraft coming in here. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. we're. Mm-hmm. We're dicey, you know. Yeah, we love is, it. This is old. This is young. The young version that I mean, I they guess. get. They're being taught by themselves, <laughs> and they don't have any <laughs> system in place. There's no fear of anybody. <laughs> they don't. They 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 they, li- they listen to no authority, and the an authority just lets them do whatever. And goes, oh, do you want to be Harry Potter people? And you're like, I don't know. I got hit for trying to watch it one time, but yeah, I guess my class can be called Slither. <laughs> So let's just do it, you know? Yeah. There's... Here's one. Here's a fun one, Justin. Did, did ninjas have superpowers? Superhuman or supernatural powers are sometimes associated with the ninja. Such powers include flight, invisibility, shape shifting, the ability to split into multiple bodies. For example, one guy who lived in the 1600s claimed in his own writings that he had the ability to transform into birds and animals. Do you believe him? I mean, I just feel like it's a translation issue, honestly. You know, I've, I've, you know, you, you know, if, if you've been around religion, Greek to mm-hmm. English, I have to not. old English. Keep going. You know, it, maybe he just been like, hey, I like birds, and it's just a, we're just maybe he wasn't good at calligraphy. And you think we're so bad at interpreting Japanese that we wrote? I mean, I don't know if you read the comment section of any, any, anything, but. Not great. Well, I mean, the thing you read earlier was 150, 300, so it could be the, kind of that scenario. Yeah. It's like, what's that? He goes, hey, birds. I'll tell you later. And he goes, I, I got to write it to the, they could turn into birds. Turn it into <laughs> birds. Done. Miscommunication. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's like, I, I think if you if you had stuff out of context, you would think, like, if you see, like, magicians, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, like, you see a magician, you know, be in a place where he's like, oh, he's in a he's in a cloth you know, bucket with swords coming down, and then all of a sudden he's the but you know the knives come down, and he's not in the bucket; he's in the back of the theater. You go, oh, he's a shape shifter. You're like, no, nah, mm. he's just he's just good with getting back there. Yeah. Real fast. So you is think that, this is probably a? I like to hear what you see. You, see. you know, <laughs> no, he's just good at like you know <laughs> this is getting out of the way and running where you can't see him. This is you. This is I'm you talking yeah. about you know and everything yeah. else is like this is me with magic. Yeah, the bucket and the swords. Yeah. That's those are all yeah. Cut that woman in half. Terms. No, that woman's just good at like looking like she's cutting half. Yeah, <laughs> you're like that's not a ninja. <laughs> she's good at shape like shifting. Yeah, yeah, she's good. At, Oh my gosh, she is shape shifting. She's a shape shifter. What are you crazy, dude? She's good at being cut in half. So this is just misinterpreted magic. That's I'm all. I'm just this saying. Is. I mean, it's just it's. Listen, I I I've scared people before. Is a warlord? It's bad, right? Is a warlord bad? It's just a guy that's has good a, at war. I think it has a negative connotation now, for sure. Okay, yeah, but back then it was like it was like so they just walked around and did wars. So would you have you would have a king? And then does that king have a warlord? Specific warlord? Where, like a commander? Where does the warlord live? Does he live in a country that's run by is he the top? I don't know. That's a good question. Like if you're if you're, you know, the president of the if we were like you, we talked to our president of the United States and then we're like, well, I'd like to hear what the warlord thinks. And then we go listen to him and he's like in Cleveland, you know. On Zoom, and he's like, well, I think we're going to... I got some different plans than what the president wants us to do. I don't feel like you really have to ask what the warlord wants to do. I feel like it's in the I know, but, like, (laughs) is he against it? Like, it's like, is he... Because I thought warlords would take over. When they take over kingdoms and stuff? I mean, I feel like they're more like... It's like muscle. They're like the guy's like... Look up what what a warlord Mm -hmm. is. I think a warlord takes over. I think it's sounds- otherwise like why well, you know what he is. He's like, oh no, he's a uh, how you doing? I'm a warlord. Uh like once he says it, you're like, oh God. Yeah, so this is all this is all about the, the feudal system, the caste system there in Japan. Was head of the very uh, some clan, launched a war against other 
something to unify Japan in the 1560s. Uh, so yeah. Samurai made up the uh, the ruling military class that eventually became the highest ranking social caste of the of the period. Yeah. So yeah, they they are running stuff. Uh, hey, what about you? I don't know what the caste system is. You ever heard like serfs and peasants and yeah. royalty? That's oh, all. That's all a caste, caste system. Okay. Yeah, where you're in different social tiers, yeah, essentially. Yeah. 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 You could argue we are, we're living one now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Though I wouldn't. Well, two of them fought last night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they're yeah. all right, but a warlord is, yeah. I don't, you, I don't think you really answered anything. I don't think I did either. Just look what type in what is a warlord? What is a war? You're just in general? It. In general. I was looking at medieval Japan. Uh, well, let's just let's start from here. A military commander, especially an aggressive regional commander with individual autonomy. That's the big distinction there at the end. Yeah. Individual autonomy. So, so you, what is an example of a warlord? Uh, uh, an aggressive tyrant, just okay. another word to describe. So I think it. they take over they take over the place. And they have individual autonomy, so they're not answering to a king, I guess. Yes, that's what I mean. Like right. you, you don't have if you're a king, you don't go. Well, what's the warlord doing? Warlords are like it's like a pirate that would like, try, but a bigger, but comes in and just goes, "I'm going to run your whole thing," mm -hmm. and then you, no one can do anything. He, his people take over the military, right? And now that country is run by him. Yeah. Most of the time, they're military people, so they already have like I feel like they'd have control. Cause like they're like the highest guy, so it's if you own if you run the military, then you kind of control the country. Yeah, but I, but I don't. But I think they. Uh, well, I think, but I think they could break off. Like you could have like a general. You have a guy at the top, whatever. But then if he gets a little bad and becomes a warlord, and then he sends all those people uh, to fight the government. I, I I would think the warlord gets like it's like a word of mouth, and eventually can get big enough. As it starts and goes, hey, so he's got to get street cred. Well, I I think a buzz he's, going. he's been doing stuff, a little buzz going, and he's like, he goes, I'm thinking about being a warlord. And someone goes, I've been waiting for you to say that my whole life. <laughs> and then you go, all right, we got two people. And then you and then you never go out and say, how you doing? I'm a warlord. I would love to, you know, you say, like, I think the government's doing us bad. We should mm -hmm. get together. Mm -hmm. And like do, and then you get everybody. Eventually, you have 1,000, 2,000 people. Right. Some publicity, some some videos, some Piece of promo people, stuff. A lot of people on board with you in the city, yeah. the town. They're like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. And then he eventually takes over. Yeah. And then you're like, I think I might be a warlord. <laughs> I think you think that as you read the paper the next morning. <laughs> you seem like a nice guy when we talk to him. But I, the more I'm – they're not saying it, but I think <laughs> he's – Feels like he's a warlord. I'm checking a lot of boxes. Checking a lot of boxes. He's been decapitating a lot of people. Yeah, so that seems not crazy. Good. Yeah, I look at my seems... entire closet; and it's all military uniforms. So I feel like I'm, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and just. So, what do you recommend for me, Justin or Nate? I've never seen any of these these kind of movies. Well, where do I start? Beverly Hills Ninja. Beverly Hills I mean, Ninja. Obviously. Okay, yeah, yeah. start there. Uh, I w I mean, honestly, Bloodsport is absolutely one of my favorite mm -hmm. movies. I need to watch it. I mean, it's we got to watch it. We'll watch it on the yeah, bus. I yeah. mean, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, Ninja Turtles, the first one, is a good one. Also, okay. Uh, honestly, like a like a real good. Other than Tom Cruise being in it, uh, The Last Samurai is a really okay. good depiction. I never saw it, but I know I got a ton of flack because. Oh yeah, well it's like, because. but like, but basically what they did was they found that thing where it's like only four people. The thing that you read, where it's like only four people have become ninjas, like, and they go, mm -hmm. "Oh, well, let's just write a story about that guy, and just make that guy yeah. Tom Cruise." Oh yeah. Oh, so they're not pretending that he's Japanese in this movie? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, not, that's what I thought it the was. The whole thing is he's an American soldier, and he adopts into the culture. Oh, that's so funny. I it's thought big. he was just supposed to be Japanese. Yeah. It's very much. I, I mean, think everybody prays. It's did. very <laughs> dances with wolves. Okay. Uh, in in that vein. That's what. Oh, that's about a guy getting with wolves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I never seen. I don't think I've ever seen Dance the ultimate love story. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It I've won the Oscar Dance. over Goodfellas. That's very true. Oh, really? Dancing with the wolves. I've never seen it. Yeah. Is, one, it, is it good or is it like? Oh, I it's feel like it's a whole yeah. thing. Yeah. It it probably is what seven hours long or something crazy. Yeah. Listen, I'm you're sure. About, you're talking about dances I, with wolves. I'm yeah. sure it's long. 
Oh, you it's know, great. it just looks like yeah. a long movie. I, I, I anytime I see it, and you're like, I've never, I don't think I've seen it. Then I'm like, eh, it feels like a kind of a whole. <laughs> that thing. was Kevin Costner's, I think, his first movie he directed. Oh yeah, and it was great. Yeah, it was great. Mm-hmm. There it is. In fact, uh, is it he? he no, he live. He doesn't live with wolves, but they. He there's there's wolves in this. Oh yeah. Or is there no wolves? There's in so it? many wolves in it. Oh yeah. Well, just one. Just one wolf. Yeah. Then why is the wolves? Dances with wolf. Well, just, yeah, it's, it's the potential. I dance with dance with the wolf. It's the potential of other wolves. Oh, maybe there there's was one. Co- there's only one confirmed. Is wolf. a wolf a metaphor in this? I mean, okay. I would say so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a metaphor, but it also is a, a, a real. One. Okay. Am I gonna watch in like it. first two minutes? I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. Is it like that? No. Oh. It's a it's a it's a it's a good it, it's very it's a very good movie. Yeah. It's oh. I, I I I like it very much. Okay. Yeah. But I think I, I think any too. any movie that shines a light on native culture. Yeah. Um is that's good. one of the reasons I, I love that Taylor Sheridan is doing so good right now because he's a big you know, he's a big advocate for yeah. uh native people. Who is Taylor? Who's that? He does Yellowstone. Oh yeah. But he did he wrote Hell or High Water and then he yeah. did a um what's the movie? Oh, I just watched it. With uh, Jeremy Renner in it. There you go. Um, but it's <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> wow, it's kicking the teeth right there. <laughs> there you go. You that's get you get the, you get you get you, right. get you get you get sentimental around Nate for five seconds. And, I know, dude. That's, that's what. That's why. That's why I know he would be great at jujitsu if he ever did it. Just like, what's this? Is he is he opening his heart up just a little bit? <laughs> Yeah. His little his, his clogged yeah. heart. Well, guess yeah. what? This is the this is the death touch right yeah. here. Bam. That's all it takes. I'm gonna go learn some Muay Thai or Man. uh what was the other one? Uh I just want I don't want to be rolling around on the ground. I had a guy, by the way, I had a guy reach out to me who's a storm chaser. No way. He wants yeah. to make this happen. Oh yeah? Yeah. He's in Texas. Yeah. He said uh like April to the next Four or five months is the season. Yeah. Oh. All the way to June. So if you want to make it happen, we can make it happen. Okay. Yeah. I got to go. You're going to go? You're I would do it in a yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. You going to go right. chase after a tornado with us? Man. Oh, you live in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, yeah man. Dude, I, I live here now. Yeah. Did you say that? I, I live here right. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a Nashville guy now. Yeah. He's in Nashville. He lives here now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. I'll I'm take very that excited. back. I'm very sorry. excited. So if, if you guys if you guys are out there and you look like the one from Oklahoma, but. I mean, only one of us is wearing mossy oak right yeah, now. So. Yeah. This definitely doesn't look like a guy from this is a Nashville guy. And you're, you're from Oklahoma. You say it real weird. You're like, I mean, you got a camo jacket on in the middle of the day, nowhere near woods. Who do you think's from Oklahoma? You know, I, that's probably more Tennessee, to be honest. Yeah, somebody, that's for sure. Somebody Y'all wear a camo? Oh yeah. Like, but is it? We got a Bass Pro Shop. We got, well, I mean, yeah. big WalMarts. Yeah. You know, yeah. We love, we love the mossy oak. Is our is the brand. Mm-hmm. I feel like y'all would walk around more like dressed like a rock or something. <laughs> I don't rock. know why. What is that? How's a rock dress? I don't know. You just got like your shape should be rocks and like wheat grass. And then you're. We do have unique rocks. Yeah. There's a thing. There's, there's a rock in Oklahoma that you can only find in Oklahoma. And it's called oh. a rose rock. Oh, wow. But it's like it only grows in a certain part of Oklahoma, but it's like it literally looks like a rose. Like it's crazy. Oh, wow. Uh, That's crazy. I don't believe that. Have you ever seen one? Yeah, I've, I I had a bunch of them. Oh, I was yeah. actually gonna I was actually gonna bring some for you guys. Why didn't you? But uh, well, because I you know because that I don't know five minutes ago on the podcast is a pretty good example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, just you know this is part of my culture. I'm really proud of it. Oh yeah, yeah? is it exactly? That's <laughs> yeah. I think it's the it's probably been the way you say it. That's, that's, that's very true. That's the problem with comics is you can't say something serious, even mm-hmm. though we will think it's great. But even if you said this is part of my culture, I'm proud of it. I would like to give you this. I would then make fun of you, and then I would say, <laughs> I really do appreciate it. That's very nice. Mm-hmm. But th- I'm going to have a hard time not if you get presented something oh, yeah. and you go like, all right, dude. Like, you know. My comedian friend of mine who was a groomsman at my wedding, he like pulled me aside. He goes, hey, dude, I just want to say like – I'm like honored to be a part of this. I just laughed at his yeah. face. Like, yeah. I can't, I, we can't do this. Yeah. I go, I appreciate it, but let's just yeah. not, you know. Yeah. yeah. This can't happen, dude. He's looking at me like, hey, just you know your flies undone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Rodney said he just said, well, I just so you know, I regret it. And I will regret it for the rest of my life now. I did it until you said that. And then I've, that was the beginning of regret. Just so you, if you want a timeline. There was the beginning of regret, and no, it will go it'll, till the day I die. It'll never end. It'll never end. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, thank you. We're back. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm in Birmingham the day this comes out. Birmingham Ooh. on the 30th and then 31st. 31st, I'll, Justin's with me. 31st is sold out. 30th, Wednesday, go get tickets. Uh, then I'm in uh, Knoxville and then Charleston, nice. I believe. And then uh, I go to Vegas for the Grammys. Oh, man. So the Grammys will be, I'm doing the live stream. I'm uh, presenting on the Grammys at the live stream. Uh, that's when th our award is being announced as well. And so it's like, I want to say it's three to five Eastern or, or Pacific, maybe. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I posted it on Instagram. Just look up the live stream. Suppose the live streams are, it's the new cool thing that people are watching. Yeah. Really. Like that people like that. because They're going to be watching it for last night. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't know, dude. I might, I might hit somebody. <laughs> Just be, you never know. Uh, but I get to present an award. So at least I will get to walk up that, there and see what that's like. That's no matter awesome, what. Man. Uh, Congratulations, buddy. It's thanks, amazing. Buddy. It's so good. Thanks, man. Yeah. Don't get <laughs> kidding. I regret ever saying I was going to get this Grammy. <laughs> You just go, I love you, man. It's just nice. I love you. Come on, Justin. We just had this How many party. times? How, How many, many times? times? You take your hat off, there's a rose rock underneath it. What were you we keeping that the whole time? You're like, well, I had it upside down. You couldn't see. You're like, oh, all right. All right. Uh, so I'll be there. Justin Smith. Yep. Dot nice. com, comedy dot com. Uh, just with this? comedy on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have I put, a website? Yeah, yeah, I do, oh, but yeah. I, I'm 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 needing to redo it. So yeah. that's mm -hmm. I'm, I was waiting to move here and then yeah, hopefully find a that's a good. good natural. You guy. probably build it here easier than you know the internet. I mean, I, <laughs> you're waiting for the big move before you build something that doesn't matter where it lives. <laughs> that's a smart idea. <laughs> 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 you know, I wanted to get my location correct before I. Built my address that uh, only people <laughs> not around me look at. <laughs> You're Mr. Oklahoma, and you thought, well, I'll take the work to someone else into another state. You're going to go to Love. That's why you go to Love's, the guilt trip yeah. you got to have for paying the Tennessee people to fix your website. Uh, yeah, so go to his Instagram. All your stuff's on the special. Yeah. We will obviously keep you updated on right, the special right. and uh, let you know when that comes out. Uh, Aaron? Yeah, Bristol, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Brian and I are co-headlining a show outside of Atlanta in May mm. in Woodstock, Georgia at Mad Life Stage and Studios. It's our first time doing anything out there. And then we'll be in Wise Guys in June. I got a lot of dates coming up, so I hope you can come, yep. come see it. Check them out. Yeah, man. It's going to yeah. be a great show. Great show. Aaron Land. Last time I undersold it. So I'm trying to... That was Aaron Land. That was Aaron Land yeah. for sure. Yeah. That was <laughs> all little mini episode. A little mini episode. Uh... <laughs> As always, thank you, everybody. We love you very much. Uh, thank you for listening to this. And uh, we will uh, see you uh, next time. See you. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.